You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Good morning and welcome to the state of Oklahoma. Welcome to Bassmaster Live. We bring you on this Saturday coverage from the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens. This is the fifth stop of the year and as of yesterday, we are halfway through this very important, very tough tour, very competitive tour, which among many other things, is the pathway to the Bassmaster Elite Series for the top nine finishers and points. At the end of it all, Lake Eufaula in Oklahoma on the Canadian River, we had nearly 200 anglers start out here and we are down to 10 on the final day. That's the first part of the toughness there. You have to be in a very special group to be able to compete on today's final and we are ready to go with fishing for the next eight hours for these anglers. They've been fishing for two days, as we said before. And, uh, Lake Eufaula, that, uh, we'll start with you, Ronnie Moore. Lake Eufaula was kind of stable last year. It's been anything but this year. It's a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah, when you come to a lake in the middle of June, you're wondering how good it's going to fish, but uh, supposedly Lake Eufaula thrives in the month of June. Last year, water levels were a little bit lower than they may be now, and they were staying at that level. This year, it has been falling over the last month. We have seen high High, high water since April, Classic, that and be, now it's down to getting regular level. Really excited to go fishing. Just uh, can't wait to get out there. That's a ticket right there. Right there. I caught some big ones on it this week. We'll see if they'll provide another one today. Championship Saturday, I'm like you fall, and uh, I'm pretty fired up. This is my first Bass Open top 10. And uh, you know what we're gonna swing for, man. We were only a pound out, and uh, we're just gonna go for it, and hopefully uh, we can get a couple big bites in the boat. It's been, a, it's been a really tough week here, but just excited to be to be here, to be at this point. Championship Saturday. You know, I'll tell you, these uh, these top tens in these in these opens are they're hard to come by. There's a lot of really good fishermen, so just uh, <clears throat> excited to be in this group see what happens really got nothing to lose today you know we we're in the top 10 and we're uh, about four pounds out of the lead so we need something big to happen today but let's go fish have some fun and see what happens Championship Saturday at the Open at Lake Eufaula. Um, it's been an incredible week so far. I've had a blast. Not catching too many fish, but I've caught some big ones this week. It's been a, it's been a really good time. But today, I don't really know what to expect. Just like the last two days, I don't even know if I'm going to get five bites. But we're going to go out there and work our hardest and see if we can make something happen today. I feel all right about it. I, after my practice, I didn't really expect to be here. So I'm in ninth. The only thing I can do is go back one. But I know where a couple big ones are. I've been getting a couple big bites today. Probably going to hunt straight big ones all day today. Limit don't do us no good. And just going to have to grind. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to try to get a hold of five of the right ones. Yes, sir. Game time. Game time is right there. The, uh, the takeoff took place about an hour ago. Yep. They've been out there fishing for a bit. We'll take you out on the water in just a while there. And those anglers obviously very excited. Many of them doing very well in the points race this year. Somewhat of a who's who, Tommy, in the points race. As we see our unofficial standings after the first hour of fishing, Matt Adams and Andrew Loberg with fish on the board have overtaken our leader, Ty Faber. When you think about the points race as well, Easton Fothergill, our new points leader coming into today, he is in our top 10. We have past winners like Matt Messer in our top 10. Four Former pros like Cody Meyer and like we mentioned, Andrew Loberg, one of the West Coast kids that's now came East and is now wrecking havoc on the Bassmaster Opens. Three of our top ten with West Coast connections. We've got uh, a Texan in the lineup. Uh, no, we don't have a Texan in the lineup. We've got uh, a, a couple of Alabamans in the lineup. Two from the north. from Colorado. Minnesota and Michigan and Colorado as well. And no Texans and no Oklahomans. So no Red River rivalry <laughs> action today. We'll have to do without that and hope for better luck next time from those two states. Matt Adams is one of our Alabama anglers. Matt has had a good season so far. Two cuts this year. Ooh. Good one. Get up in here. Set the hook. I ain't the one that was here, but he'll keep and he'll start the day at least. Not as good as I thought when I set the hook. Number one. To start. 
Tommy, we saw we saw Matt Adams on Bassmaster Live a couple times this year. Santee Cooper, we saw him at Lake Okeechobee. He's used to flipping that shallow cover, and that's what oh, he yeah. loves to do. He has found some grass this week and made it pay off, but today the water might be falling out a little too much. He may have to adjust, but it's a good sign he's already got a bite in the boat. Let's get out to Andrew Loeber. Lake Gunnersville guy by way of California, and he sets the hook early today. Yeah, baby. Oh, sorry. I thought it was way bigger than that. A little jig bite in the morning. <laughs> I had a bad keeper. Four more bites, baby. Let's go. All right. Good action to start the day. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon. We've been holding out one surprise for you. We have a guest analyst today. We've hit the big time here. It's the world champion, ladies and gentlemen, Justin Hamner. Justin, uh, you're in between tournaments on the Elite Series. We sure appreciate you making time to come in and join us. I think it's going to be fun watching today, as tough as it is. Absolutely. I mean, we've already seen a couple of jig you know setting the hook i love setting the hook <laughs> this is going to be a fun time i'm so glad y'all have me here and uh yeah this will be interesting oklahoma's treated you well you may you know be doing well in the bassmaster elite series across the country second in our progressive angler of the year points but you're the world champion and you won that just up the road from lake you follow oklahoma at grand lake what's that been like the last few months since you took that title in late march oh my goodness it has been all over the place my phone has, I don't know how it hadn't just like <laughs> melted. It's been getting blown up crazy, thank everybody, but it's been wild and it really has been a dream come true though. You are the face of the Bassmasters now. Is that, is that settled oh, a good I feel with bad you? for Bassmasters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone else does. I, I think everybody's You proud had of. the least makeup needs backstage. You took about two minutes yeah. and you're good. So face made for the face of Bassmasters. Absolutely, absolutely. Justin, thanks again for being with us today. We can't wait to hear your take on what we're seeing out there. Talk about generally these conditions here and how you might go about tackling a lake like this. So the first thing that, you know, is on all of our minds is with this water dropping that just makes these fish move so much faster so much quicker and you're going to have to really stay up with what's happening i mean these fish they're constantly going to be on the move so the guy that can figure out where these fish are going and not necessarily just stay on what they may have been doing but be able to find the fish where they're going. Yeah, Tommy, the lake was four to five feet high about a month ago. It has been falling over the last 10 days at least, maybe longer, maybe two weeks, four inches a day. Four inches may not seem like a lot, but think about a bush uh, four feet underwater, and then all of a sudden now we can probably see its roots exposed, how low the water is now getting. It's getting back to normal, but these fish have been living in a jungle the last month. Absolutely, and the baseline is this is not like a high, high elevation clear water lake. I mean, two, two feet feet of visibility is, is normal oh, good stuff. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Hank Weldon said you could drop yeah. a lure in the water this week, and as soon as it touched the water, it would disappear how dirty it was in some places on Lake Eufaula. That is Ronnie Moore right there. I'm Tommy Sanders. We're already introduced Justin Hamry. We have a Such with us, Mike Sukon. Uh, Such, we are halfway through the year on this uh, elite, uh, this, uh, not elite, this rush for the Elite Series, among other things, our St. Croix Bassmaster opens. Yeah, I mean, the elite qualifiers, look, let's Paint a little playing field, a little talk a little baseball. We got 152 guys in our elite qualifiers. Nine of them advance to the elite series next year. They get nine swings at the plate, nine tournaments, and you better hit a good one. You better, you probably got to get hits in six out of the nine. And if you win, you get a grand slam. That's that's big because you get to go to Bassmaster Classic. Well, we're in inning number five right now, and no extra innings available. So yeah, no. it's a little early. You hope your starter is still in the game, Tommy. You don't need to be in your middle reliever yet. Not yet. Not exactly yet. Well, let's get back out on the lake right now. All 100,000 plus acres of it here. Eastern Oklahoma, and our leader as it stands right now is Andrew Loberg. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, man. Uh, pretty pumped up. I uh, just caught like a, a 290. That was the first one, which kind of settles me in a little bit. I'm a little amped up. My first Bassmaster Open top 10. Um, and I'm just kind of picking everything apart. The bite's a heck of tough. And uh, we're in the dirty water throwing a jig. And 
just gonna pick everything apart and there's a bunch of fish around here and if I could just put it right in, you know in front of the right five um, it could be a good day, but you never know, man. These fish, they have the mind of their own and they like to do whatever they want to do, man. So uh, we're gonna get after it and hopefully put a couple big ones in the boat. Um, we've been kind of switching it up every day and which is good, kind of got to have an open mind on this place. But uh, hopefully to get four more bites, seems like the quality is decent. I caught a four and a half and another three and lost another big one here yesterday in only like an hour or so. So I'm gonna kinda milk this stuff for as long as I can. And if I feel like it's dead or I need a change or something like that, then uh, I'm gonna do it. But as of now, there's a lot of life here and uh, a lot of bass swimming around. And hopefully we can make them bite. Andrew with big wins in his career already out there on the Delta. Lake Havasu as well, out west. Yeah, we talked about Andrew Loberg being now an East Coast transplant, moved to Lake Gunnersville in Alabama. It seems like the hub for people who want to go from the West Coast and make it in professional fishing. It's a lot of travel if you live out there, so moving to Alabama is much more central. Obviously, a lot of different bodies of water to be able to fish as well, and Loberg is transitioning very well. But as a college angler at Chico State, he was one to be reckoned with. I've known his name for a long time. I'm not surprised to see him here and in the top nine in points yeah. as well. Back to Matt Adams, put our first keeper on the air for us today. Yeah, um, we got one fish for a little over two pounds. It's been, you know, about what I expected. You're just gonna have to bounce around a lot of spots till you figure something out. Uh, you know, I've spent the first two days downriver in some grass and there's not much on the lake but i decided that after seeing the last three hours yesterday i didn't get bit i felt like i needed to make a change didn't think it could be one down there um didn't even know if i could get bit down there so i decided to come up here and run some rock piles and some offshore stuff and see if i can't find the fish it's going to take to you know maybe end up on top at the end of the day because I figure I need 19 or 20 today and that's just not happening down there. So we're chugging along. I'm actually throwing a DT-10 right now, bounce it off a rock and there's a lot of fish on this spot, but it's been hit really hard over the course of the tournament. So I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it. We're gonna run a bunch of different stuff today and see if we can't find fish schooled up on uh, something that is a little bit off the beaten path, so to speak, but four and a half days of the best guys in the world fishing. Everything's been beat up. Well, Justin Hamburg, when you go from 200 anglers to 10 on a place that's fishing small, that's got to be a, a, some help, right? It absolutely is. And that, that's what I was just thinking, you know, these guys between practice and then the actual tournament, like you said, 220 guys out there beating this place up. It, it definitely helps to have something in your back pocket to be able to move around. I was just looking at those docks. <laughs> I, I feel like somebody is gonna catch some couple big fish off the of docks today. With that water dropping the way it is, those docks are one of those stable places where they can just move up and down those docks depending on how that water's dropping. So watch out for that dog. Would not mind a top water explosion as well today oh, at some point if Matt Master can deliver for us today. Okay, oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, it's just a jumper. It didn't really look like a bass. I guess it's about gotta be though. Oh, it's a bass. I don't want us to be jumping like that. Gosh, somebody. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. Ha! Ooh. Mm. That sucks. That's a pretty decent one. Two and a half pounder or so. Jeez. Looking like smallmouth. So I talked to some anglers on the yeah, phone last night and they said, I don't know what it is about this lake, the house. but these fish fight harder than most places and they It'll jump like, like smallmouth. On the first third and a flat on the bottom third. And that's, that's where you kill them. That messer the only. Well, 
opens so Angler to last. qualify for the final day twice. Got one top water bike. Right? Oh, last year, yeah. Yeah. He or no, no, I think that was his brother Leif. Oh, his, oh, yeah, okay. I think it was his brother Leif. Cousin or brother, I whatever they are. I messed up my message. I think I think I heard Hank say that yesterday. Okay. Yeah. But Matt was a champion last year at the Harris Chain Open to make the classic for this season. He would love to somehow come from ninth to first and be able to win today and make another classic. Just getting started. We got anglers on the board here so far. Our top 10, 10 anglers left from the original 200 plus. St. Croix, Bassmaster Open, Lake Eufaula, Oklahoma, presented by seven. Andrew Loeber, the man on top right now, very slim lead ahead of Matt Adams. I favor yesterday's leader after day two. You should have to score yet. We'll also be looking at Bo Thomas, Easton Father Gill, and all the rest. We'll be back. Lake Eufaula. The St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Eufaula. Presented by Seven and sponsored by Toyota. By Nitro Boats. By Dakota Lithium. And by Humminbird. Just getting started here with our day three action. Of course, we're in between elite events here this weekend on Bassmaster Live. Next week, a second event in, Cal in uh, Alabama. And, uh, of course, we were at Wheeler Lake last week. And this lake is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be Smith Lake, Coleman, Alabama, our host city. And the elites have never been to Smith Lake. H how can that be, Justin? I don't <laughs> know, but I am excited that we're going. It's going to be a different time of year. You know, most of the tournaments that are, you know, on Smith Lake, they usually end around May. Like, so just to have a tournament this time of year, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be a party boat central. Oh boy. But I think we're gonna catch some fish. That'll be good. Let's get back out to Ty Faber, your leader after day number one. I have to apologize to Jack York. We do have a Texan in the top 10. And I have I to apologize to you. It was Matt Messer in last year's yeah, top he, 10. Yeah, Y'all yeah. got to get it together. I know. I know. We're, hey, getting, it's, we're <laughs> nervous. We got the classic <laughs> champion studio. Tighten you know? up here. Tommy, I got introduced to Ty Faber. Oh, he might talk to us right here. going pretty slow. Hold a bonehead move and broke off the first bite I got. Go ahead and retie this real quick. Um, we started started out this morning by takeoff, trying to catch some of the release fish. And we uh, had one little bite, that was it. And now we're out here um, where I've been catching them, uh, most of them in the tournament. And I've had one bite and Messed that up. My team partner back home would have put me in timeout for that one. So we're just trying to trying to get another bite here. They've been kind of few and far between. But it was kind of like this yesterday morning. Um, just uh, pretty slow to start out the morning, then it kind of got better as the day went on. So hopefully that's hopefully that's what we're we're getting to. Faber won big uh, Bassmaster Team Championship in yes, 2016. You were scooping me, Tommy. I was going to say, I, I got to meet him at <laughs> Kentucky Lake when he won the oh, Team really? Championship, and then he did the fish off. I think he came just short, and that Scott Clift was the one who advanced to the Classic at Conroe from that. But meeting Ty there, he's a plumber from Colorado. Uh, and I think he says he works at 7,500 feet of elevation for most of his life. So fishing, he has to come down to our level. Yeah. Uh, 7,500 feet is the reason we don't see many Coloradans on Bassmaster <laughs> Live. <laughs> we do see a lot of Minnesotans, however, and we've seen a lot of this guy, Man. Easton Fothergill. A college classic bracket winner from the University of Montevallo. And we're, we're just a few events away from his home lake, Leech Lake, which oh, is yeah. a brand new Bassmaster tournament venue that we're super excited about. And that northern division, the St. Clair, 
Leech and Mississippi River events. That that is a full up division. We're going to see so many Midwestern show up and fish. It's going to be great. It's been a slow morning, but that's expected. I really haven't had any uh, much of a morning bite this week at all. Things really don't get started for me about until about 8.30 or 9 or so. So really anything before then I look at as a bonus. So there's really no stress yet. But <clears throat> this is where I had a big school I found day one in the tournament. There was about probably 40 fish under the stock when I found it. And they were all great big ones. Um, ended up catching a couple, filling my limit, and then just leaving. And then yesterday I came here, I jumped off a five or six pounder and then broke one off and messed up the school. And they, they didn't fire the rest of the day for me, so, and I just decided to come and check it here right away this morning. It's still a little bit early. The sun needs to get higher to get these fish to set up right to where I can catch them. They're still kind of roaming all over the place right now. So we're just gonna be here a couple more minutes and we're gonna bounce around until the sun gets higher and we'll be back here in, a, in an hour or so. But hopes are still high for, for a good day today. Easton was 17-12 on day number one, 16-11 yesterday, so pretty consistent. Came into this event third in the Tackle Warehouse Elite Qualifier standings. Now he's in first place. He answered the phone last night, Tommy, and the first thing I said is, you're a lot better than we all thought you were because he has shown up time and time again, different bodies of water. What is the Coosa River? You're not far. You're not far from where he goes to school. He moved from Minnesota to that part of the country, Montevallo, to Fishing College, the Coosa River, all those different lakes. The Tennessee River is not far because he said he wanted to learn so much. What a, that's, a, that's a huge testament to how diverse Alabama can be. Absolutely. It's such a good training grounds, it seems like, because we do have such diverse fisheries. And this is a guy that grew Perfect. up, you know, fishing all this all his life so and obviously has a pretty good morning, mentor. It's pretty slow, which is kind of expected. Um, I'm sitting on the spot that I've weighed in every single bass I've caught this week. Um, I actually found this spot on the first day of practice on Saturday, Saturday evening. And uh, normally it don't work out like that. If you find something on the first day of practice, they're normally not there or they've changed. You got to figure out something different. Um, but first day of the tournament I got here and they were still here just as good as they were, maybe even better. Um, I caught every one of them the first day, bright and early, and then the past two days of the tournament, it seemed like all the stripe, it's just kind of a point. I think it's just kind of a highway for these bass moving up shallow, coming out deep. Um, it's just kind of like a highway for them. And it seems to be the past couple of days, the stripe and crappie get up on top of this point around all the structure chasing bait. And then at about 9.30, it seems like they all disappear and um, the bass show up. So I fished a little bit of new water this morning because I've been protecting this thing. I've been starting here and sitting here all day uh, just, just to try to protect it to the final day. And it's worked so far. So I think we're here to stay for a while. Um, run a little bit of new water this morning. Didn't, didn't do too hot. So I think we're just going to ride it out and try to win this thing. I think we could go catch a couple small ones dragging a Carolina rig, but we didn't come here for that. So we're going to stick it out and see what happens. Trey Swindle's been fishing opens for a while. His best finish so far is two or three hours south of here, Dallas, Lake Louisville, 20th place. But this is now his best finish yeah. in the opens. Had a little bit of a setback a few years ago. He was going out second place, had an issue with like the registration insurance part of it, and you have to be that. covered correctly. So we didn't get to see him fish that final day at the Chesapeake where that was his best shot to be able to win an open. He is now starting the day in fourth, which was lower than his start at Chesapeake Bay on that final day, but so much closer with our top five being about a pound and a half apart. So it's anybody's ball game today, and we'll keep an eye on the pattern. But this spot he talked about, it's worth sitting out all day on because it, there's no rhyme or reason, no time of day dependent. When the bait fish comes through, he can tell the difference between different species and bass, and those bass have been the ones that have been very active at certain parts of the day for him.
10 are fishing on here. A lot on their mind. Of course, the overall big picture is on their mind. The big picture here at Lake Ufala is going to also include some recreational boating here today. <laughs> Justin, you said we're in for a little bit of that next week. Also at Smith Lake, I think. A whole lot of that. <laughs> big place, big place here. If you've ever traveled north from McAllister, Oklahoma towards uh, I-40, it takes up about 50 miles of U.S. Highway 69. And uh, with all the twists and turns, it's longer than that. We'll be back at Lake Ufala in just a couple of minutes here. Starting tomorrow, the U.S. competes in the Championship of the Americas here at home as Christian Pulisic and the USA seek their first ever Copa America title. It all kicks off with the U.S. taking on Bolivia tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern on Fox. It'll be a big battle there, big battle going on for points all year long. Nine events here. The St. Croix Bassmaster opens. This is the fifth stop of the year. Lake Eufaula, not the one on the Chattahoochee, but the one over here on the Canadian River in Oklahoma. Big sprawling lake. Not every place is holding winning bag type fish, but uh, these anglers here, these top 10 who remain after 200 plus fish for two days, have done a good job of finding them. Let's get a look at Bo Thomas. You know, it's, uh, it's still early. I mean, it's only 7.30. This is about usually, I mean, pretty close to the time I was here yesterday. Uh, you know, the bass, the, it seems like they're acting a little bit stubborn. I mean, could be because I took five of their giant friends yesterday, but I mean, it's just fishing. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to what I'm gonna do and keep pitching this drop shot around. I do see the bait a little bit more active now, so it's kind of getting them off the bottom that were like they were this morning like this morning all the bait seemed like it was so clogged on the bottom that like it was really hard to kind of see what was going on and but seems like it's starting to kind of shape up and i mean i'm just going to keep grinding keep looking for some bass might might look around this area a little bit better and uh, try to get try to get five big ones i mean but it's fun, we're fishing championship day. We're on Bassmaster Live on Fox, so, I mean, I can't complain. I'm excited. Now I just need to make some TV for y'all and uh, catch us a big and I don't know, we're gonna have to caress them, we're gonna do something. We're gonna do something to get them to bite, but we're gonna catch them today. I ain't gonna say we're gonna die trying, but, I mean, if it comes to that, it might, it might come to that, so. But no, I feel pretty good. It's early. We're gonna get some bites. Just, yeah, my dad and I got my dad and my uh, my two roommates that uh, I travel with. But third roommate's out here fishing today, Matt Messer. You gotta watch out for that boy. He seems to crack him whenever the camera's on him. So we're gonna. It's awesome. Young know, family got to drive down. They drove down 13 hours to come watch me weigh in and. You know, for me, that was a pretty special moment. I mean, family's everything, and my, like, the way I grew up, it's just, I'm always, I've always been a family man, and to see the support from my family is uh, pretty special. So I'm gonna try to do right by them and do right by everyone back at home in Ebersburg and, and in Kalamazoo area, and try to catch some big ones, so. Uh-oh. He was not lying. These fish are jumping. <laughs> like I was saying, I mean, <laughs> he's so crazy. What one, but we'll take it. Yep, it was on a, a robo worm. I was throwing that that filler worm earlier, and uh, just uh, I don't know. They didn't. They definitely didn't seem to. Uh, they weren't reacting to it super well. So uh, threw, on, threw on the robo and finally got a bite. So we're gonna run back through my area after I weigh this one. Over 
up to just a little bit when you do, just because its tail's a little messed up, and I want to make sure that they know that you're talking about the bench. Yeah. So. Couldn't have given us a better rundown of his thoughts and feelings and wow. happiness yeah. of, of the situation, and then right into a, a fish catch, Tommy, of possibly getting him on the board. He scripted it out for us. <laughs> yeah, he did. Thought our bass track was broken. That's only our third fish of the day. That should give him the lead, though. All right. Top three came in five wow. ounces wow. apart. That's some valuable information right there. So good on both. Trying to hit a lick for Michigan there, Western Michigan, where he was a multiple national championship competitor in college. The running thing I'm, you know, seeing out of all these guys, they're saying around that 930 is when their fish really start to fire up. So mm. interested to see if that's going to hold true. Connor Jacob, another angler who's uh, day two is better than day number one, moving in the right direction. Yeah, yes indeed. Our big bag was 19.5 on day one, Jim Moyna, and then Ty Faber and Bo Thomas both had 19 pounds. Faber with one more ounce, 19.1 yesterday. Had a little trouble hearing Connor right there, but we'll work on that. He is also, if you think about the college fishing, I'll have to look through the whole top 10, but we go from one college angler, Connor Jacob, Auburn University, over to Matt Messer, Kentucky Christian. We talked about Andrew Loberg already. There's Bo Thomas, all former college anglers. Yeah, Connor was a high school star back in Peoria, Illinois. It's really cool to see how this, you know, these college and junior programs are really, I mean, it's putting these guys out. It, it's training these guys for being able to travel across the country, fish multiple day events, and you know, when they get to this level, it seems like they're already ready. Especially like for a tough day that I can't catch any of these things in the morning. Another one again. Been having to pull a miracle about one o'clock every day. Shows you how you have to be well versed. We saw him with a topwater earlier and a lost fish, Tommy, and now he's fishing offshore with a spinning rod. He won an open last year with a buzz bait and, and flipping lily pads. He caught one off a, off the lock wall before he locked through to come back and ends up being the winning fish. And Got himself into this year's class. Matt and Leif, when they were at Kentucky Christian, caught a 36 pound bag and had over 60 pounds for two days at the Harris chain for a victory. Set the all-time college yeah, weight record. That's right. I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> that is a bag. <laughs> Two cuts this year, including a seventh place at the Santee Cooper Lakes. here in seventh place in points for Matt Messer. So have a good outlook as we move forward into this season. What a year it's been for Easton Father Gill. Well in the striking college bass master national championship well enough to qualify and win the bracket competition. Yeah you know, we stated the other four anglers that were from the college series in our top 10, but it goes without saying, he is our college representative. We know he is from oh, the college yeah. series, Montevallo. As we look at his electronics, about eight feet deep. Justin, they said a lot of these fish haven't been suspended this week. They've been glued to the bottom, whether it's, you know, obviously not every fish is like that, but tight to rocks, tight to stumps. Is that just safety and security with the water falling out above their head? You know, I feel like it is, but also, I'm starting to think that it's an Oklahoma thing because, I mean, that was one of my biggest deals at the Classic this year. I wasn't able to see the fish before, you know, casting, and it seems like these guys are doing a lot of that same thing of they're just having to present their baits, you know, either right above these rocks or around the brush pile. Yeah, so this week, it's and then the fish actually come out and show themselves. And a lot of this fish that the you see floating up all is, week, so that made me want to commit to the offshore game. 
just because I thought it would bring the fish out to me, which I, I do think it has done. Uh, but so far this morning, I'm not seeing too much. But uh, when the sun gets high, it positions them, it gets the shad right, and it, and with that, it gets the bass sitting where I need them. So the next hour or so, things should start firing, and I should start to catch fish here soon. So, but yeah, with the falling water, I've I've had new fish rotating or coming to my areas every every single day. So it's definitely helped the offshore game. Father Gill made a lot of headlines last year when after he qualified for the college classic bracket, he had a brain abscess required surgery and he healed up just in time to go compete and win it and make the classic. Him and his partner Nick Dumkey, yeah, they won the points race for the year. Team of the year, qualified for the championship. They got top five in the championship, almost double qualified for the bracket. And then boom, that hits you during the championship and he recovered, yeah, three days, Such. He got cleared three days before the bracket started. Then he goes out and Amazing. dominates each day, Tommy. Now he's our Tackle Warehouse EQ points leader for the season, the second top 10 this year. Yes, the footage from that. Yep college season there in the bracket championship. A miracle, as you say, Ronnie, that he was even able to compete here. Yeah, he was still getting his stamina back, still getting his boating sense. He had been in the hospital for a few weeks. He had been recovering at home another few weeks. Big time moment for him in his life. The support that he got, and then boom, he showed up in the biggest moment. And here he is competing in the Opens at number one in points for 2024. Easton Father Gill, all the rest of our hopefuls when we return. Here Bassmaster Live and our live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Open. Lake Eufaula in Oklahoma presented by Seven continues on here. Down to 10 anglers on this third and final day of competition. Very important points at stake. We've got an EQ race going on. Very much prominent in everyone's thoughts out here. And there's your leaderboard as it stands right now. Andrew Loberg taking over the lead there. Bo Thomas in second place. Matt Adams and the leader to start the day, Ty Faber, is in fourth as it stands right now. Ronnie Moore? We wanted to fourth? bring the yeah, we wanted to bring the Dakota Lithium screen of knowledge. We do it all the time for the Bassmaster Elite Series and the Bassmaster Classic. And now here it is for the Bassmaster Opens. You were talking about that leaderboard, Tommy, and Andrew Loberg from the West Coast moved to the East Coast. His first Bassmaster Opens top ten. Tommy, he's been a winner out west at the California Delta, Lake Havasu, places like that. Those are opposite ends of the spectrum type of fisheries. He's moved out east and he is figuring it out around this area. And now we bring it to Oklahoma. He's in the top 10 and he is our unofficial leader. We saw him earlier, first catch of the day on a jig. And I wanted to, in our Bass Pro Shops top lures, show you a little bit more about the two jigs he's been working with. Andrew Loberg from the West Coast, bringing a little bit of custom jig work to the East Coast. A 3 8 ounce custom jig and a half ounce custom jig have been his deals this week. The big deal, he used a half ounce brown jig with a Yamamoto flapping hog when he was fishing a little deeper early in the week. But when he went shallower, he switched to a black and blue with maybe a little bit of purple in it. That jig has been his shallow jig. We're starting to see him move a little shallower on some structures. That 3 8 ounce jig with the same trailer matching the different colors for the water clarity. When you think about the dirty, dirty shallow water, you got to have a darker presentation at times, but when you get a little deeper, that water at the bottom is not nearly as dirty, so he could get away with a brown jig there. So, 3 8 and half ounce jig. We don't mind seeing a jig hook set on a Saturday, do we, Justin? I love a good jig hook set. <laughs> a little bit of Bass Pro Shops top lures love for you there. Should be keeper number one. 
It's gonna be close, but we're one for one on fish today, so. The length limit, Ronnie's 14 inches? I do believe so. All species? 14 and a quarter. 14 and a quarter means it is keeper number one for Easton. Started the day in third. Mm, that may put him in the lead. If Bo Thomas has put him in the lead, Bo got him did. close. It did. Got him within half a pound. He'll be close then. In fact, Houston. it just did. Updated bass track. He's up by one ounce, Tommy. <laughs> Our points leader and tournament leader. Big pile of boulders right there. Uh, it comes up to about 12 feet. And I just panned over there with the forward facing sonar and saw one sitting on top of it. And I, I watched him slide behind the boulders there. So I just, I'm, I've been throwing a Nico rig all week. I just casted it behind them rocks and just basically let it sit there until he grabbed it. Just because I knew exactly where he went back behind that rock there. I thought I saw another one with them. We're, we're about to find out here. If this boat doesn't drift over the rock. Easton's from Minnesota. As you can tell, there's just stuff everywhere in this lake. Says he can find dirty water to practice in up there. Says the Milford Lake, where he won his, uh, yeah. was also very much uh, limited on visibility. And there Kansas. we go. I favor. Better fish. We got us one. I think that one will keep. He's built the right way, at least. That's an old ball and chain. Oh, I can't cover it if it's a ball and chain. <laughs> We're on the board. We're in the game. It is pretty funny. Like, it seems like a few years ago, you didn't you didn't see the Carolina rig as much as we have been lately. Great structure bait. One to dissect the cover if you're not sure what it looks like. Now, when we know what the cover looks like, it's one to keep it in the strike zone for longer. I believe it was. We'll have to see if there's a weight up his line. Thought I saw a swivel in the middle. I know Ty has been using a big magnum shaky head with a big mm -hmm. magnum trick worm throughout the week, so that's might that might have been what it was as well. I said on the stage yesterday, Tommy, he's gotten lucky. So when he answered the phone last night, I said, you, you got to, just like Justin Hamner would, you can't say I got lucky. I put myself in position for good things to happen. That's the way you say luck these days. Because he, you can't <laughs> luck into wins sometimes. You can get lucky in moments, but man, Ty has put himself around the right fish this week so far as we go out to Trey Swindle. See that? He's got school of fish chasing, fighting mm. over it. Not sure if that's bass. If it is, it doesn't look very big, but it's definitely active. Yeah, he was talking about how he's primarily fishing one spot, and that is the good thing about this time of year. You know, when we start to get into the summer. Oh. 
Mm. Yeah, that's Broke that one off. But this time of year, you know, it can be tougher fishing, but it's a lot more stable. These fish aren't really moving. Man, what is going lot. on with my leaders? No. That's two. I hate done broke two off. Put some bigger line on there. <laughs> These fish, it's, it's more of they'll set up to start feeding, but they're in that area. They're not they're not leaving these areas so much. I mean, we, we kind of saw that last week at Wheeler. You know, you find those schools and it's a matter of just getting them to bite. So. They're probably gonna stay here until they move shallower in the fall. Like they're not gonna go another exactly. 30 feet deeper in the next month. This yep. is probably where they'll live. They'll just get harder and harder to catch as the summer yeah. goes on. <laughs> Out here using the FFS that everybody loves to talk about. Um, I've given it a shot. I'm gonna give it a little bit longer. There's a very likely possibility if something doesn't change, I'm gonna run down to my shallow fish and just check them. Cause I'm not, I'm seeing some fish, but I'm not getting much of a reaction. A lot of this has been beat up, I know. But I felt like it gave me the best chance of Ah, so I'm coming up to eat and didn't get it. Um, I felt like it gave me the best chance to catch a big bag. Wind's playing a little bit of a part. I probably need to go to the heavier head. Throwing a 3 16th, wind's playing, playing with it a little bit, making it more difficult. That was the first bite you guys got to see right there. First bite I've had on a Demiki rig so far. We're gonna keep plugging along. Guys are catching them doing this. I caught them in practice doing this. I just didn't catch the size I felt like I needed, so I'm kind of swinging from the seat of my pants here. We're gonna keep throwing at them. We're gonna make them look at it at least. Tommy and Justin over Matt Adams' shoulder to the right when he was looking just a second ago. You could see that line of bushes. Mm -hmm. And for viewers at home, if we can get that shot again at some point or we zoom in on it and see, you can see the tops of the bushes are green and halfway down the bush, it starts to turn real brown. And, and that is from the water line that's been the last I know month. everybody watching this would rather me be throwing a frog right now. I'd rather be throwing a frog right now. There's your shot. Yeah, you can see the water line on the bushes in the background. Especially to the right of that timber sticking up it's Matt Adams having a great year for sure top five at Okeechobee top 10 Santee Cooper it's got him up there fifth place in the points race that's a lot of water for a hundred five thousand acre lake oh, to drain. Wow. Two here. You can tell he's a smallmouth guy. He's trying to keep that thing from jumping. <laughs> he said he put it all the way down to the real seat this week, his rod in the water to try wow. to keep him from jumping. Oh, not as, as, not as big as I thought, but we'll take it. Come on. That was a giant. It's all right. Turn something out again. One and a half pounder will give us our fourth lead change of the day. I expect that with a, these fish aren't, they're post spawn, Tommy. Yeah. But they seem a lot healthier. They've been up shallow in their post-spawn phase, feeding up in that high water. Now they're pulling off. They're a lot healthier than that first push-off we see deeper normally. I favor on top. It's got the biggest fish we have seen so far today. Easton Father Gill, Bo Thomas going to be moving up. He's the first angler, I believe, with two keeper suits. So 
Yes, yes. Things are changing. That will be changed when we come back, and we'll take a look at that for you and some more fishing on the way from Lake Eufaula. Bassmaster Live at the St. Croix Bassmaster Open Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven Lake Eufaula on the Canadian River, which heads up way up in the mountains of New Mexico, travels across western Oklahoma, picks up a little bit of that Oklahoma red dirt along the way, which uh, makes for a lot of color in the waters that maybe can't see quite as deep as you can in some of the lakes to the east of here up in the Washtaws and the Ozarks, but uh, still a great, great fishing lake, huge. Also, over 100,000 acres. Bo Thomas, the man on top, the only angler so far. Bo Thomas from Michigan has got two fish in the boat. The rest of our anglers are stuck on one. Top four, top five, actually, have fish in the boat. Ty Faber had the lead to start the day, and he's got the biggest fish of the day. Five of our top six coming into the day, Tommy are on the board. Trey Swindle's the only one in the top six starting the day that does not have a keeper. He has fallen to six now, but that just goes to show you it's been tight all week, and with the way this morning's played out, we're, it's going to be all the way through the day, as close as it can get. stress that uh, winning this tournament is very important because it gets you into the 2025 Bassmaster Classic coming up from Texas next year. Yeah, so like in this area you can see like how like the, it looks kind of black like there's a bunch of cuts and like what I'm casting on right now looks like a little school of fish down there and on this little like rocky drop off and uh, I mean, that's pretty much what I've been targeting, just looking for, looking for some dots that are uh, sitting around this rocky stuff. I did just have, uh, after, before I caught that one uh, two-pounder, I had a pretty good, well-sized mark eat it. So, I mean, probably thinking it was a big one, but I mean, I mean, I guess you really don't ever know, but that's what all the other big ones looked like yesterday, but that's all right. They're finally starting to kind of turn over, and we're gonna we're gonna try to bust the bag here. Oh yeah, here comes one right now. Those best finish in the opens came last year. The St. Lawrence River, fourth place up there. Yeah, he said that was more expected. Him being a smallmouth guy, it was expected to have success there. He wasn't expecting to have success here, but he learned, you know, I got burned up shallow last year as things changed on this body of water and the pressure got to it and conditions altered. And he said, I was going into practice knowing I wasn't going to get burned this week. I'm gonna do my best to stay ahead of the fish or with where they're at but he said it was a genuine surprise to be, uh, you know, have a chance to win this one compared to St. Lawrence. Got one of them rock bass there. Mm -hmm. Hook sets are free, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no charge. Keep setting, got me excited. You know, I talked to Bo last night for a little bit, and one of the things he said about this area, he thinks it's, you know, probably the cleanest water that he found. So the way that this kind of creek sets up, and we're seeing a lot of the same, you know, a lot of the guys in the top 10 in this area, that river is flowing down. So all that muddy water is coming down and this creek actually turns and goes back up. So it's kind of protected and all that water isn't just, you know, hmm. rushing into there. So 
keeping that water a little bit cleaner. And you can see when, when you're looking at this graph, it's deeper, closer to the boat, and then it goes up on the point there. And he's, you know, you, you're seeing some of our anglers today fishing up on the point, maybe some stumps, and you're gonna see that depth range on their graph maybe be eight to 15 feet. But Bo being off of that point, watching that stair step of rocks and brush, he was about 23, 25 feet where he was sitting at, but some guys have caught him out to as deep as 35 this week. Just we can just throw him in the pocket. Swindle, you might recognize that name. He's got famous kinfolks in the bass fishing business. Yeah. Fact. Oh, no. Did he break again? Good job. Who would that be, Tommy? I think it might be that fellow, Gerald Swindle. You ever heard of him? You're from Alabama. You might know him. I never heard of him. Oh, he's a big time guy. Catch two, him at uh, Smith Lake. Two anglers oh, of your time. Oh, man, what a start to the day. You're good, Trey. Broke me off. Some of that Uncle G, you know, knowledge needs to come in and calm down, <laughs> retie, get yourself back together. He's around some good fish. You know, look at the tray to get on the board there. Everybody's pulling for all of these guys to get on the board during the course of this day. The keepers are not easy to catch here. That is for sure. That's what makes it a great test for these anglers trying to make their way to the Bassmaster Elite Series. Bo Thomas, Edwardsburg, Michigan, the man on top right now. Colorado's Ty Faber right behind him. Got a good, good tight competition going here. Fifth stop of the year in the St. Croix Bassmaster opens. This is Lake Eufaula, Oklahoma on the Canadian River here. Fifth stop of the year. We're past the halfway point as of midday yesterday in this season. It's going by very fast, but it's uh, can seem long to these guys, and it is a lot of travel. Nine events if you're fishing the elite qualifying route here. It is a big, big challenge. We have had a great season so far. Very, very exciting, very interesting. A lot of diverse locations. We started down in Florida at Lake Okeechobee, Giant and Scott Martin Giant was the local favorite, and he showed us why. Yeah, absolutely, Tommy. We got to see a couple big things from him this week. We got to see the biggest single-day bag in Open's history that he set early in that event, and then followed it up with just measly bags of 25 and like 31. He was able to break 90 pounds for three days of competition. That, that's great four-day weights, and so that set the all-time Open's weight record. And the Clewiston kid, the native son to Okeechobee, fo following in his father's footsteps, wins on his home leg. Stop number two was the first stop in this division we're on today, Division Two, and this is Jeremiah Kendi, well-traveled bass pro and a real pro at Lake Washita. Yes, yeah, stepping away from the professional fishing scene to stay close to home in Hot Springs was the worst thing that the locals could hear because Jeremiah Kendi, he is one who takes quite a bit of money when they come to Lake Washita, and he was able to take the victory, signed up for the Opens. We'll see him at the Bassmaster Classic, just like this man, Kyle Austin, another local Tommy, winning on his home body of water. Yeah, absolutely. 13th on day number one with 24-7. That's how big the weights were up there, but he uh, he really ginned it up after that. Special place, this spot right here. Yeah, Kyle Austin found a little spot when the water was flowing 
like it was. They stacked up. He was able to catch him on a spinner bait, catch him on a lipless crank bait, went to a special tree. He visited that tree seven times throughout the day and got the six pounder he wanted off of it. Wins at home. He had righted so many wrongs of coming up short of making the elites last season, just a spot or two out. He was able to win and make the classic. We go to Logan Martin, and what else, Tommy? Another guy who calls the lake his home. He's able to dominate and win. Four in a row. Yeah. Josh Butler had a little bit of the shad spawn morning bite going on. Got a solid limit. Normally cold out all of those fish in his limit with the fish by the tail race. Not the case on the final day. He needed at least one of those good morning fish to see him through. But there, there was an afternoon flurry for him where he was able to pull away and win at Logan Martin. We will see him at Lake Ray Roberts in the Bassmaster Classic. Yeah, I've been fishing other tours for a long time. Said he had to come over and do this because that was his goal. Make the classic. Got to. He has done that. Josh Butler will be there on Lake Ray Roberts, north of the Dallas Fort Worth area. This will be the first year. one, Tommy. What's that? First one without a local winner this week. We That's had an right. Oklahoma right. get 11th. Justin Phillips barely missed out on rep run. There's your tackle warehouse, Bassmaster EQs. The top nine points earners will get to the Bassmaster Elite Series next year. Eastern Father Gill up there today on his way. Cody Myers out there fishing as well. Matt Adams, Ty Faber, Andrew Loberg, Jack Andrew York. Loberg and Jack York, man, this place is star studded today on Lake Eufaula. Good test for these guys who've proven themselves to be formidable. This year of 2024, the St. Croix Bassmaster opens. It's been a little bit of a tumultuous season. That Santee Cooper event that Kyle Austin won, it was one, obviously, wild weather on that final day, but Short it threw a lot of loops at people. Tucker Smith had a tough one. Easton's worst finish of the year was there at Santee Cooper. Paul Marks, a lot of our guys who were up top early in the season took a step back and have had to claw their way back into the top nine. So we're just bouncing around. I have about seven or eight key areas that I've been catching fish all week. Um, my main deal this week has been rock ledges, almost like underwater bluffs. And then right on top of it, there'll be gravel. And some, some spots, there's even timber on top of it. But the main deal has been them bluffs. You gotta be near them bluffs. And I kind of went on top of the spot here, but right behind me, it's about 15 feet and then just dumps into 35 right here. And that's kind of been my deal this week. And these fish just roam up and down these bluffs, just hunting for food. Um, but yeah, sometimes you'll pull up and you don't see one. Sometimes there'll be a group of five to ten. You catch one and then they just disperse. And you got to leave and come back. And... But yeah, that's that's been my pattern this week. And I don't know. I'm averaging a fish probably every three spots. It's just a matter of finding them. Overall this week, they've been pretty easy to get to bite once you find one. I've caught every fish I've weighed so far on a Nico rig. Uh, as far as the worm goes, I don't think it really matters, but I have noticed that you need a super fast fall rate. So I've been throwing a 332nd and bigger just to get just to get it to move fast. And it's, it's a complete reaction strike when it just goes by their heads. Almost all of them grab it before it hits bottom. And if they don't grab it when it hits bottom, I give it one pop and they'll hit it then. Easton Fothergill <laughs> sizing it up in detail. We appreciate that. He's got one fish though so far, pound and a half. -er. I don't know if my unit's on live right now, but you can see the bluff I'm talking about on here now. It's just a little rock ledge. And this is the kind of stuff they've been cruising all week. Yeah, my pattern this week has been the rock bluffs. Uh, you can see on my screen here, it, it's 15, 15, and then just dumps to 25 there. It's like a wall. That's been my pattern this week. I have about seven or eight spots that are like this. And then up on top, it's usually gravel. And these fish are just roaming these edges. But that's been my pattern this week. And yeah, you just gotta 
keep rotating them because once you catch one, they kind of disperse and get all weird. You gotta let them set back up, give it like a half hour or so you can come back and usually find the group again if they're on it. Justin, like where you won the classic about 7,500 miles up the road, not much grass here in this lake. But what, what else is similar to this in Grand Lake? Uh, like he was just saying right there, I mean, it's those bluff walls, it's so popular throughout the whole year. I mean, really the only time that it's not playing is when, you know, the fish go up to spawn. But mm -hmm. these bluff walls, especially in Oklahoma, it's such a good place for these bass to set up. They can slide up and down. Oklahoma is a you know a state where unstable weather is just such oh, yeah. a big thing. That's true. And for these fish to relate to these bluff walls, they can just slide up and down in the water column so much easier instead of having to travel that long distance. Yeah. So that's why that bluff wall. And I'm really interested because you know that's very similar to what you know we're seeing out of Bo. I mean, it's pretty much the same exact deal that he's doing. Um, seems like Easton has several more spots, and I think Bo is just going to kind of hunker down in that one area. But. And and I asked Easton this. I kind of, if I know the answer, I ask it so they don't know I know the answer. But I said, hey, anybody in the top ten or of note fishing near you or sharing water? And he said, yeah, uh, Bo Thomas, not far away. I asked Bo the same thing. He said, no, nobody's really on my juice. Nobody. So I don't know if he hasn't seen Easton, but Easton saw him in the general region, not the same spot, but like you're saying, the structure is very similar. Maybe that he's on another point not far from uh, Bo where that river starts to turn and that creek opens up. And so um, that has been a hot area of Lake Eufaula this week, though. Absolutely. And I think that goes back to having that cleaner water in that creek. I mean, without that cleaner water, I don't think you're able to fish offshore. It's nearly as effectively, but it's just so much harder to catch those fish in that dirtier water offshore. Let's move from East and Father Gill. You look at the vastness of this big, big waterway here. There's the US 69 as it crosses several places on this lake here. And Cody Meyer. If somebody's gonna pick apart a bridge, it's gonna be Cody Meyer. <laughs> yeah. Gotta be 14 inches, like we nope. said, for all species. Check, but. That's not going to keep. Not going to make the cut. It is good to see Cody Meyer break okay. through for his first Bassmaster Top 10 yeah. with us in the Opens this year. He's been one that we expected to have a great season. Now he's moved his way up quietly into the top three in the points race. He's just one of those guys that's going to be so consistent and you know, that's what pays off, at, you know, especially when you're qualifying, have nine events like this. That Not consistent. what we're looking for. It'll sneak up on guys. And when you think about it, the nine events this year travel through eight different states. And the only state that duplicates is South Carolina, where we were at Santee Cooper in March. And then you go to Hartwell in October, two opposite ends of the spectrum for bodies of water. Mm -hmm. And so they're tested. Smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass, current, rivers, lakes. You're going to have to have it all this year in the opens. Meyer narrowly got in. He had a six pound, 13 ounce, our big bass of the week yesterday, but only four fish squeak into our top 10. Well, they'll be headed to the state of New York. Uh, will our bass master? Opens anglers, St. Croix opens anglers going up to St. Clair. Well, actually, no, no, they're going to St. Clair. They're going to, but we will go with the yes. Elite Series up to New York. Now I got it right for you. Our last two events in this plate, great place. Of course, you think of the big buildings in Manhattan, but uh, it is a huge, huge fishing state. Home to six of Bassmasters, top 100 bass lakes with the St. Lawrence River, actually, topping that list last year. That's where we're headed with the Elite Series angler. 7,500 lakes and ponds, 70,000 miles of the river's great fishing. That's why we all love New York. 
tonight. It's baseball night in America on Fox as Matt Olson powers the Braves against Aaron Judge and the Yankees. Or the NL Central leading Brewers battle the Padres. It all begins at 7 Eastern on Fox. Check for the game in your area. The two good ones there. More New York. We, we can't, we're on the subject of New oh, York man. big time today. And, and it is totally different. If you've never been to upstate New York to go fishing, oh. totally different than what you know on TV through other New York. So look at the new leader. Yeah, Connor, oh, Connor Jacob. Jacob. I told you before we started, did I not run? Sneaky. Look out for this sneaky guy. Sneaky Auburn University alum. Roll Todd. Got a three-pounder <laughs> and a four-pounder. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was coming. Bo Thomas. Following up, a Ty Faber started the day with the lead. He's hanging in the top three as it stands right now in our points leader. St. Croix Bassmaster opens EQ Eastern Fothergill in fourth place. Ten anglers left out of 200 plus who started three days ago. Here, a little less than three days ago, as a matter of fact. East Central Oklahoma. That's how they're distributed in this big, vast lake known as Eufaula here. Second place, Bo Thomas. Let's check in our angler from Michigan. And I'm seeing a lot of activity now. Uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can get something going here pretty quick. I mean, they're just a little, little stubborn today, but I mean, that's all right. I'd rather work for them anyway. So. So very cool, Tommy. Talked to Bo last night. He said, I've been to three classics, the last three classics, working them. Oh. You see some I mean, stuff in the expo. The and you, I mean, you know what to expect the next so year. So many fish swimming around. It just, you know, how many casts do I have to make until I get one to bite? It's kind of the deal. He said, I don't want to work next year's. So I want to be at it after watching Justin Hamner win. I want to go and do it. And I said, well, you're in luck. Justin Hamner is our guest analyst today to or tomorrow to do bass live and Bo said oh man a little a little more pressure on me now that I got him watching <laughs> yeah he better catch him now <laughs> uh oh uh, Bo is a but <clears throat> a buddy of mine and I did get to talk with him last night and it was it was pretty funny I was I was giving him a little bit he better he better show up in this one <laughs> <laughs> oh, mainly rock This is the same principle as the Classic yeah, Expo. You get a preview rock, of who's going to be fishing some, on the Elite Series trees. next year oh, when man. we do these opens. A little bit of study session for Justin Hamner to know. When you, when you think about the Cody Myers and the Easton Fothergills of the world, you can see a couple sneaky things they may do on the opens before they come and face you in the Elites. That was one of the things I was excited about. You know, well, there goes some right there. Some of these young guys, I mean, they, they've got some tricks up their sleeve. They, they spend so much time on the water, it's it's impressive, and you know they're quick learners, and they're going to be definitely bringing something to us. Cody, just watching Cody with a spinner rod. Anytime he's got that spinner rod in his hand, he's just gosh, he's smooth. Mm -hmm. Justin, last year our average age of the the nine guys who qualified from the, from the oh, EQs was weirder. just under 25 years old. Before this week, it was 33, about your age. Now this week, with we had Tucker Smith, Jack York, and Matt Messer, all young, early 20s. In the top 10, it got under 30, back to like 29.5 average of our top 10 in AOI. Well, we talked about it coming in the season, just with the caliber of former Elite Series pros or professional anglers making the jump over. And you've got a mixture of veterans on the opens who are now in their maybe third or fourth season of fishing this format and trying to make it. Uh, and then you have obviously the newly graduated college. Easton Fothergill graduated on the final day of Logan Martin, which yeah. was our last open. This is his first full open with no college responsibility. 
w w the possibilities are endless now for him because oh, he's not distracted. <laughs> We're talking about 40-year-old. Yeah, Sorry. go ahead. Cody Meyer and Matt Adams are two 40-year-olds in the top 10 at I could make the elites next year. We'll talk about Connor come Jacobs here, moving here. up into the lead, and this is That's what he did it with. One. Four wow, pounds. I didn't see this coming. <laughs> That's crazy. Jeez, that's another good one, dude. Ooh, whoopsies. Gosh, that's like a three and a half. Okay. Dang, it's a four. Four even. Nice. Oop. Cool. Bonus. Yeah. I guess. I've had weird stuff like, uh oh, forgot to do that. All right. Uh, chill, dude. Uh, there we go. Now we probably have some water to build, too. <laughs> yeah, that worked out. I've had some weird stuff like this happen every morning. Like, I've had a good starting spot, but it's never been my actual starting spot. It's always like three spots in, I randomly catch a couple good ones. So. So what I did, um, it's been like three totally different days, but the first day I wanted to try some cranking on the way down because I hadn't really tried that yet. Did that, didn't really get bit, ended up pulling up to a place kind of where we started and I caught four keepers right off the bat and I thought it was going to be a lot harder to catch, you know, a limit that day. So I was like, wow, that worked out pretty well. And then <clears throat> the next day I was like, I'll do that again. Start on that spot, don't catch anything off it. I'm like, hmm. And then I wind up rolling in here after a few spots and I catch a five and a four right away. I was like, that's odd. And we were heading for here and then, you know, same thing. So moral of the story, I guess I should have been starting in here every day. And I never did yet. So yeah, I was four even. Connor Jacob, rough start to his season, 189th at Okeechobee, but watch this progression, 139th at Washita, 46th at Santee Cooper, and then 29th at Logan Martin. Then he goes from seven to first today. So he's he's a guy with the, you know, the, there's his direction sorted out. He's going up. And you never know how it could be. That first event, he could have had a late boat draw and been fishing in the crowd at Okeechobee. It doesn't work out for you. And you don't know what else to do. It's your first open. Uh, what needs to happen is that when that sun gets high, they kind of position a little bit better. I'm kind of focusing on these isolated rocks kind of off the bank a little bit. Um, I think I'm kind of trying to put the puzzle pieces together with this pattern. I think what's going on with how hot it is, these rocks are just boiling and they just really don't want to be on the bank. Water temp's hot. So I think if they just slide out and just hang out on these little isolated boulders, I think that'd be the good deal. Um, with all the bait and stuff up shallow, it kind of makes it tough. Um, so hopefully the sun will pop up, they kind of position right and we can kind of dot them up and start catching some. Um, both days, yesterday and the day before, I came here in the afternoon and did it and uh, had a decent amount of bites. I mean, decent at like, you know, a handful. Um, so we'll see, we're just gonna keep grinding and, uh, and rolling with the flow. Um, and there's a few other stretches I'm gonna check, but this area is just known for a lot of fish. So if I can put that jig in front of the, uh, the right few, I think we'll be all right. And uh, my other stuff I was fishing, like where I had that 18 pounds, I was fishing like some main points and I hit that stuff yesterday, man. And it was just a grind. It was, uh, it was brutal. And I don't know if I want to sit out there and uh, bob a Carolina rig and a jig around when I could just cast at them. But either way, it's tough fishing, but we're just going to keep, uh, keep it rolling. Lowberg in fifth place. Stuck in one fish, but it's a good one. Two pounds and nine ounces. That's the way we're stacked up right now. Connor Jacob moving from seventh place all the way to the top on the strength of a four pounder. And a four pounder is a big one here on Lake Eufaula this week. That is for sure. Could be a game changer for him. Still only three pounds from first to sixth, and we're two hours into two and a half hours in the fishing day. It, it's going to be close all day, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, staying good and tight. We kind of like it like that. It's going to be some good competition all day long on Lake Eufaula. We will be right back. The St. Croix Bassmaster Open on Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven, sponsored by Mercury, by Powerpole. 
and by Progressive Insurance. 10 anglers left out here, day number three. This is the championship day here for this fifth one. St. Croix Bassmaster open schedule for this year. Anglers are all EQ anglers. Elite qualifying, trying to find that route to the top tournament trail in the Bassmaster system. Bassmaster Elite Series. Our first look at Jack York from Lake Fork Country, East Texas. The wind's starting to pick up. Yeah, south wind blowing there. It'll be warmer tomorrow. That's what that usually means pretty much everywhere we go. <laughs> I said I'm ready for New York yet. <laughs> you got to get past Smith Lake. He's going to be hot one there. They're under the heat dome right now, but there are some storms coming that may cool it off midweek during your practice there, Justin. Oh, don't, don't look too much into that. That's going to be those afternoon blow up storms where make it more humid, just more humid. Yeah, just mm. see me out there swimming some of those tournaments. <laughs> Two cuts this year for Jack York. Jack York, also, this is not his first time on Bass Live. He got to join Dave Rutcher right. at Lake That's Fork, right. he did. where he guides He was at our guest in, analyst in there day two at Lake Fork. Deep East Texas, or wherever they want to call it. <laughs> and uh, he got to guest commentate on Fox Sports 1 with Dave Mercer. Had two top tens last year on the EQ's circuit. Uh, Eufaula and Alabama, the other Eufaula Lake, and also the Harris Chain. He made ten top twice. tens you're saying in both of the shortened events. We started the season with a two day instead of a three day because of weather, no. and we ended the season with a two day instead of three day because of weather, and he got I a top 10 in both shortened events. I like that. That's when that big one blew up on it. Just can't pull it until I miss a frog. I don't know if he's trying to eat the frog or the grass. But he knew, he knew he was supposed to eat something, he just didn't know what. told you earlier about Matt Adams has caught most, if not all of his fish that he's weighed in around shallow grass, water willow. Well, you can see we made a big change. Now he's back to it. Down, it's a pocket that I didn't, I fished in practice, I haven't fished yet. Water's falling out, it's. Jack York's hooked up. Oh, and a big oh, spoon. Oh, big spoon. Oh, I like that. Spot line. Drift off of them. Freaking spot, dude. It's a healthy spotted bass for around here. Uh. Nowhere to go but up for Jack as he started the day in 10th place. That's what we're looking for. I'm gonna keep this whole flat. I like how it sets up. Got a bunch of points and stuff to it. And Bro, we might have just found a freaking megawatt. Suckers are everywhere right here. If he can get that spoon bite going, it. he could get right in a hurry. Do it. And he kind of has to, Tommy. There was the, the biggest gap Please. from anyone. Everyone was pretty close, but there was another pound and a half from ninth to tenth. He snuck in there. Everyone was within four and three quarter pounds of each other, but he was another pound and a half behind ninth place. So he'll need a big, big day today, his biggest by far. He's been consistent, two 14-pound days, but mm -hmm. he'll need to get closer to that 19, if not hit 20 Might pounds today. Up, up win and throw a plug at him. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but they're freaking mega dotted up. They're 500. I'm gonna go up here and put a little six cents 500 DD on them. We can get that group to fire. We could have a bag, man. There's some good ones down there. I think that might be kind of something we need to run today is just little points and stuff like this that 
I think with the water dropping, a lot of these fish have been kind of moving out. And in practice, a shallow bite was good, but it seems like some of these groups are starting to pop up out here. slow start to his season, but he's been climbing in our EQ points list. About 20 spots almost every tournament. Now he's from 18th to, to 9th in the AOI. Some of the guys, Tommy, we talked about it on stage. They're from the south. They had to gather up as many points as possible before we head to St. Clair, Leech Lake, Mississippi River. Some yeah. of those southern guys can do totally fine up there, but this is their home region in the southeast portion, the Midwest uh, or southwest. They want to gather up as many points before they head north. Meanwhile, guys like Evan Kung, who have led the points so far this year, he said, I just need to continue to survive. Survive this one so then I can head closer to home when we go to smallmouth country. And Evan did that. This is his only slip up. He was 94th after day one and, and finished 95th. Really stayed at the same spot, but dropped down to third in the points race. He mentioned that on stage. Wait till we go up north. I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> Dustin, you kind of said that yesterday to me that you have done pretty well up north and after Smith Lake, uh, the elites are going to Champlain and St. Lawrence. You've had some pretty good finishes. Yeah, I'm excited about that northern swing. I don't I don't know why, but it just I guess fishing the for spotted bass like I fish at Smith a lot and I'm just very comfortable with yeah, clear that was water, big, light line. Especially after, you know, big morning smallmouth. getting They're off dumb. to an interesting start and then finally getting to here. Um, with this whole dock flipping deal, or this marina, it's kind of meticulous, and I, I feel like I have to really pick it apart to get a few bites, so the last two days getting two good ones right off the bat has really helped me settle down and just you know, do what I need to do and fish as slow as I need to, because it definitely is easy to start fishing it too fast, and you really, you know, you won't get as many bites as you could if you really picked it apart, so very grateful for that one and that other three with it. <clears throat> and I was getting kind of worried that you know, there weren't too many fish left in here, so that was a little part of the marina I hadn't fished yet. And it was good to see that there's a few, you know, hanging around still. And Connor with a little momentum from his last stop on it. EQ's Logan Martin at 29th, top 30 finish. There's a lot of pressure to come through and have a good finish when it's close to home. It might not be your home lake, but you got to kind of protect territory. Is that how you're feeling, Justin, as you came into the Alabama swing of our elite schedule in sixth in points, and after Wheeler, you jump up into second, and now you're trying to finish it out next week? Yeah, um, you know, honestly, going into Wheeler, that was the one I was most concerned about for the entire season. That place scared the heck out of me and to come out of there with a top 10, I was super thrilled by it. <laughs> but now Smith Lake, that's a different animal. I am excited for that one. That's the one I had circled all year. If it's gonna be the closest to my home lake, I guess you would say, that we'll ever go to. So I'm, I'm excited about that one. But yeah, kind of represent Alabama. Elite Series, never been to Smith Lake, which is remarkable. We had a, that is a tour event there in 04. We had a, a, an Elite 50, which is kind of a special division of the elites, uh, the next the year after, 2005. This place is big enough. This could be a good Elite Series venue, oh, whether we came early room. in the year when it's high water and dirty water, pre-spawn fishing maybe. Well, we saw how the classic was. Like, if, if you give some bushes in the water, Grand doesn't have too many of those. If you gave some, a lake some of those, that's what you follow could be. Or you could fish it in June, but it's big enough that a hundred guys could. One. That is a good one. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna come right back there where you are. Come on, baby. Come on, 
come here, come here, come here, come here. There she is. It's number one. Choke the freeloader. We've had some mishaps. Hey, we broke the dag mice. Definitely had the opportunity to yeah, have man, a big bag a of big ones coming off. Let's turn it around though. That's a good yeah. keeper right there for Trey Swindle. Trey back in the hunt now on this day. Moves him all the way up into fourth place. Feels like you're way behind after you broke off three or four fish, Tommy, but he's still right there. Only needs four more bites, and if he gets four more like that, he'll be okay with it. Went in as less than two and a half pounds. What do you think about that? I think he's a little mm, shy on that one. He's learned. Ladies. He's learned from Uncle G. Right. We'll find out. We've got a lot of fishing <laughs> on the way. We'll be right back. You follow Oklahoma. This is the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Eufaula. Sponsored by Seven, presented by Seven, I should say. It's been a long time since the Bassmasters had been to Eufaula until last year when he brought the Open here. Uh, Joey Nania, I believe, won that one last year. Right now, our leader is Connor Jacob of Alabama. Bo Thomas right behind him. Ty Faber of Colorado in third place. Good tight competition, top to bottom right now. Would this be two guys from the state of Alabama, not far from each other in the state of Alabama at all, taking a title on an Oklahoma body of water? That? I don't yeah. know. You know. Could be. I think it's because of the way these Oklahoma lakes set up. They have a little bit of everything. I mean, you, we've seen Matt Adams, you know, fishing grass up shallow. Obviously, we have the Coosa River for that, and then you have the bluff walls. You got the boat docks. It's just, I don't know, sets up really Alabama. It's about the same size as Gunnersville, this lake. Yeah, I didn't realize how big of a lake this is. Yeah. Oh, it's huge. You could probably just look at the bottom portion and be like, that's a, that's a decent sized yeah. lake. And then you're like, oh my goodness, look up there. Nania one averaging about 17 and a half pounds. This year we had the leaders right, th right at that, a little more than 34 pounds. So maybe look to low 50s to win it, 51, 52. Connor Jacob, your leader with a four pounder and a three pounder in his live well right now. Trey's hooked up again. Trey Swindle, that might keep. Did it just spit up some bait fish when it came in the boat? Did he lose his bait? Curious to see, you know, he had those mishaps earlier. He kind of got that oh, figured out on, and dude. put behind him. He's had the most hook sets today. He's had oh, a lot a of hook one. sets. He's around the right ones. Oh. Come on. <sighs> Gotta be a 14 incher. Oh, we're hooked up too. Maybe. No. It's not the right size. <laughs> <laughs> I know Bo's I thought a big it was boy, just his that's... worm. I thought it was just his worm down his hook a little bit. Bo was telling me last night too. Trey threw it back. He's been soaking, uh, soaking all his worms in bait fuel. Thinks he's getting a few extra bites with that. I was kind of curious why Connor is, was using the drop shot on the bait caster, but I think I kind of see now, I think he's using that bait caster around these 
boat docks just to be able to get those fish out of yeah. there. Uh, Cables and metal and hoses and yeah, all of it. Probably fishing line. We know Justin okay. Hamner's knows I'll about catch fishing, some fishing line. line. <laughs> I still couldn't get over that whole spool I pulled up. <laughs> that was like a joke after a while. It just <laughs> hey, did you out ever, of the water. The, our biggest question on live, did you ever tie on that crankbait since you caught three of the same color and the same brand, basically? Did you ever throw that crankbait just no, because I you're figured, like, I mean, that's, you know. I'm too hard-headed. <laughs> <laughs> no, anytime my bait got close to the bottom, I was going to be hung. <laughs> so I knew that crankbait would have lasted that's, about yeah. two casts, and it would have been right back where it started. <laughs> He's seeing something right there that he likes. One of the hardest parts about fishing marinas, there, there's usually some brush piles or something, you know, people that either live there or you know, they'll sink these brush piles right under these marinas and it's so hard to get to them because it'll be right under those center floats and have all these boats in the way, but that's where those fish live. And there's a trick of pulling it out of that mess. Absolutely. Justin. And that, that goes back to why he's using that bait caster <laughs> for the drop shot. <laughs> that was one of the main goals not to do today. Thank you, I appreciate the heads up. I'd like to see him pull out that big spoon, drop it around that Yeah, marina. exactly. Here we go. Oh, there he is. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, he's got me all wrapped. Stop it, ah. That's been happening a good oh. bit. At least that was only like a two-something. Simultaneous hookups, mm -hmm. Bo Thomas catches one, throws it back as well. Connor Jacob threw that one back, but not, not by choice. Not him. <laughs> We're getting around that nine o'clock hour. Yeah, you know, I saw that coming in practice. Yeah, start, yeah. start having it. Good point. Multiple three pounders doing that. And I was like, hmm. Hydraulic cables in there, and what happens is I try not to ever cast over them, but sometimes you have to. And like that one, I cast it over it when the fish came up, or I. I think I know I don't I don't even think I cast it over it, but what they'll do is they'll come up and jump and go over it. And once you're looped, you know, it's you have to pray from the jump back over. And every time I've lost one, it's been that exact scenario. But it's a bummer, but at least it wasn't like a four. If I hook a four doing that, I don't <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna catch it. Luckily, oh, every time I've hooked one like that, it's been under three, so yeah, it's one of those rare patterns. Right? Yeah, it's one of those rare patterns too, where you're like, I want a good one, but not too good. Right. You know, you don't want a six pounder. You're like, just give me some keepers doing that, and then let the six pounder, let him eat over there, away from the dock. But yeah, that one would have helped for sure, though. It's probably a big two. I'll take a six pounder. I, can get it. I was about to say, <laughs> beggars can't be choosers, but Connor Jacobs being a little picky on when the big ones bite for him today, if they do bite. I'm at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, and we have a couple of our top competitors for our Tackle Warehouse EQ Points Race standings. That is the season ending standings. If you're in the top nine, you are making the Bassmaster Elite Series. We've got a couple of those guys we mentioned Easton Fothergill, Cody Meyer, Matt Adams, even more in our top 10 as well fishing today. But wanted to compare the seasons. Matt Adams, fifth place in points right now, 851 points. He's got about a 25 point deficit to our points leader, Easton Fothergill. This is how his topsy turvy season has been. Now we always are covering the Bassmaster Lead Series here on Bassmaster Live. 100 of the top pros in the world. The feeder system, the opens though, normally has fields of 200 to 225 pros. So you're going to have a tough finish here or there. You just have to minimize where it is and how far down the standing.
standings you are. Matt Adams started the year with a fifth at Okeechobee, a 61st at Washita. Then he goes to Santee Cooper, gets another top 10 eighth place. We saw him on Bassmaster Live, both of those tournaments. 74th right down the road. Logan Martin won. He had circle on his calendar. 74th place he said on the phone last night. Two or three bites go another way for me. They get in the boat instead of coming off. I may have been in the top 10, and that's the fine line between 74th and 10th. But this week he has righted the ship in sixth place coming into today. Tommy, he said he was very worried going to St. Clair because if that's the case, that might not be his best finish. Uh -huh. But he's going to hopefully break that good and bad trend. Meanwhile, our points leader, Easton Fothergill, representing from the college series. He was our classic bracket champion last year, fished at Grand Lake in the classic that Justin Hamner just won a few months ago and has represented well in the opens. He is our points leader and he's got a 7th, 11th. His only slip up was Santee Cooper in 83rd place. He's got a 25th at Logan Martin and then 3rd place coming into today. And so you can see the overall consistency limiting the bad finishes. Santee Cooper though threw a lot of our anglers for a loop. Not only did Easton Fothergill, guys like Tucker Smith, Paul Marks who had been at the top of our leaderboard, guys like Evan Kung survived that one and had a good top 10 finish. And uh, those guys obviously are going to be in our top 10 mix going throughout the rest of the year. Congratulations to Easton, the 16th place at the Classic too. Yeah, year. That's another one of our college strong. anglers represented. It's one of the top college qualifier finishes at the Classic through the years. Connor Jacob, though, the man on top. It just that one came on, that came off at the uh, boat dock there. Bo Thomas, Ty Faber, Trey Swindle on the board now. Same thing for Jack York. We've got everyone on the board here so far today. Uh, except Cody Meyer, waiting for Cody Meyer to put one in the boat. So we maybe see that when we come back. Starting tomorrow, the U.S. competes in the Championship of the Americas right here at home. Christian Pulisic and the USA seek their first ever Copa America title. It all kicks off with the USA taking on Bolivia tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern on Fox. And we are going to keep rolling on through our morning with live coverage here from St. Croix Bass Master Opens. Thank you, Fala, here presented by Seven. Ten anglers have survived from the original 200 plus. That is overcoming some odds just to be here on this day. Connor Jacob is the man who sits atop our leaderboard. Connor started in seventh place. Got a four and a three, as we know, in the live well. Just had one come off there against one of the docks. Two biggest fish of the day. Of course, we had a 6-13 yesterday, 6-6 six, six, won uh, Big Bass on day one. Several other six you know, pounders came back caught. At the end of the day, I ended up catching one that helped me to yesterday. But most of my weight came first thing in the morning. But um, seeing a few this morning, and you know, I've caught a couple off that corner I lost that one off of, and I caught a few coming up here. So it, it's feeling decent. I feel like if I fish it out pretty good today, I can at least catch three keepers. But I feel like I can go find two somewhere else. I've got some other stuff to hit, but it'd be nice to catch a limit in here. How's it going? Good. Can't complain. A couple. I've got two right now, good ones, that I lost a few, but they're definitely eating better than I expected. Yeah, I am. I'm throwing on a bait caster because I've had some, you know, wrap-ups and stuff like that, but yep, that's about the only thing I've caught him on all week.
getting texts from Elite Series Pro Logan Park saying that Connor fished at Auburn while he and Tucker Smith were there. Ah. So they were. He was one of the Auburn teammates with them there, and that he is trying to channel the Connor Jacob luck factor because Connor won one of our college events at Smith Lake. Granted, I think we've had two college events maybe in April and February. Those are the two months mm -hmm. maybe. But still, a win's a win. So yeah, Logan's trying to keep the train going as he snuck into the classic cut or at least near it after Wheeler. ceiling here is this week has been around 19 pounds. I think we've had three anglers hit the 19 pound mark. Uh, two of them uh, fishing today and favored, the other and being our, our leader. And Jim Moyna who from led day on one. day one who did not make the top yes. 10. Yes, only two fish yesterday. Yeah. Which for guys catching them offshore on a jig, I thought he would be able to hold up, you know, but he gives great updates on his YouTube each evening of practice of his thoughts of how it went. And, Many were saying he didn't even know where he was going to start day one of the tournament at. Like, he didn't have a starting spot. That's how mm. confusing practice was. So to have 19 pounds on day one was a bonus. But it always kind of gives you insecurity, Justin. If everyone's looking at you, expecting you to do 19 again, and you're like, brother, I don't know how I got 19 today. What am I supposed to do tomorrow? Yeah. It's always one of those things, like, the end of the day looks good, but it's like, you don't know the struggle I had to go through to get to that. But a lot of guys say, I don't know if I'm going to catch a fish tomorrow. Yeah. Didn't you say that at the Classic too, Justin? I probably, I said a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> the other way, the code word is, uh, it looks a lot better on paper. That's for the, I don't know what in the world I'm going to do tomorrow is. It looks a whole lot better on paper. <laughs> but a lot of these places, I mean, that's, that's how you have to fish is, not getting too dialed into one thing because it's changing so much and it seems like that's what a lot of these guys are doing when they're, they're keeping a little bit of everything honest. You might not know where you're going to catch them at but you just get that confidence and have a bait that you're confident with and you, you can kind of just run all over the place. Did you say you did the ages of the top 10 suit? I think Ty Faber would be our oldest angler in the top 10. And he's not even that old. Maybe maybe Cody Meyer, but one of those two. Matt Adams is 40. Oh, okay. That'd be Matt Adams. Oh, well, Matt seems yeah. so Ty much Faber's younger. Ty Faber's 38. Than that. Okay. Cody Meyer's 41. Okay. The only other 30 year old is Andrew Loberg. Oh, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Moina would have wrecked the curb a little bit. Yeah, yeah no he's doubt. Great guy. Man, no he's been competing out here for 30, 30 years. years. Plus. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. At the highest level he's been fishing. It is very cool to see the dedicated anglers who fish all levels and trails to try to make their dreams come true. Meeting Ty in 2016 at the team championship portion, they win the, the team portion, they go to the individual portion, just comes up short of making the classic there. Disappointed, probably thought, I'll never see these guys again, you know, like, Ronnie will never meet me, like, we'll just, they'll disappear. And I met him last year at the first meeting at Eufaula, Alabama for the EQ, the points race, the full nine went up to him and shook his hand and he's like, do you know who I'm at? I was like, I 100% remember you, Ty Faber from Colorado. Like there's just, there's just tournaments and moments. You remember he caught him on a spoon at Kentucky Lake in frigid conditions because the team championship was in December that year. So it was a cold December 
week for him and his partner. They didn't mind it. They're from oh, Colorado. Colorado guys, come on. <laughs> they thrived. You had guys from the Ozarks in that in the top two or three as well. And then here we are eight years later, and he's inside the points race cut to make the Elite Series halfway through the season, and he's four more fish right now from possibly making a, a Bassmaster Classic. I'm just ready to see Seth Hook again. I know. <laughs> On a big stand-up shaky head with a magnum trick worm. A little bit of calm before the storm here, as uh, Justin Hamner pointed out. A lot of these guys told us at the top of the show that the, this is about the time when they turn on for them out there on Lake Eufaula. Through the first two days, every day is different. We know that, but uh, be anxious to see what happens in the next 30 minutes, the next hour or so. Connor Jacob, though, the man on top, two biggest fish of the day in his live well right now. That is strong. Bo Thomas, Ty Faber, Trey Swindle, and Easton Fothergill, our points leader. Head up our top five of the 10 on this final championship day. St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Eufaula here in Oklahoma, presented by Seven Reels. And we got a lot of races going on here. Our EQ race is very, very important, trying to get access to the Bassmaster Elite Series for next year. Connor Jacob. The man in the lead starting in seventh place, the angler from Auburn, Alabama. I love it. Also, you got, yeah. You've got Alabama, Michigan, Colorado, Minnesota, California originally all represented in the top six. Uh, the new California one is now Alabama, but yeah. he's from California. Yeah. <laughs> It's also another, these are divisions too. It's divided in divisions. This is the last one in division two, the last of three. And the divisions are important because if you win one of these, you have to make sure that you fish all of the events in the division. Uh, Jeremiah Kendi fished here, did not make the cut, but yes. solidified, yes. confirmed his classic bid. And I assume the same thing for uh, Josh Butler. Yes. Let's get out the jack door. Oh yeah. Uh oh, Ooh, fat spoon. That's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Friggin' slap that I think I got a foul hooked. That's how big it is. Oh god. Take your time. Oh. Ooh. Yes. Freaking neat. Heck yeah. Mm, there we go. That's what you can see happen with yes, that sir. big spoon. <laughs> Appreciate it, boys. Wow. Make up some ground quick with that we one. We need five like that. <laughs> They're finally starting to pop up. Good one. Probably a five. Caught her in the side, dude. Crazy. That never happens to get that lucky. Heck yes. Get five like that, It'd be legit. For real, dude.
big spoon. You never know how they're hooked, Justin, but obviously that's the size they could entice because of what it this imitates. What is that spoon imitating for those fish down there? It's a big shad, you know, especially like when we're fishing the TVA. Have your head on my Miki. It's more of a gizzard profile, and that's just what these big fish eat. So you're showing them fish that big profile, big bait fish, and it's such a reaction bite. Like these fish might not be really wanting to feed right now, but you sling that big spoon down there and start ripping it around, these fish cannot help but react to it. It's just like when we see them up shallow on a swim jig or bed fish, when they swirl or they flare on something, they're doing the same thing down below. And when it's a spoon, an yeah. ounce, you know, getting yanked Absolutely. up by them, they, they have to react almost. And as hard as he's ripping that thing, I mean, bass are so curious and just so predatorial. Whenever that thing just gets ripped by them, oof, get me fired up. Cody Meyer, looking for a keeper here. Oh, I think we might got keeper number one. <laughs> Man, only took till about nine o'clock, but that back yeah, that's it. Let's see here. Hey, finally on the board. We'll take it, anything right now. Let's get her. Keeper number one. It's not big, but. Matt Messer, the only one without a fish today. Jack York's winning as a five and a half pounder. Mm. Ooh. Getting it going starting now. To fire. Yeah, hey. we're starting to see some catches, Tommy. All these guys Man. said 9.30 and. Yeah, yep. here it comes. <laughs> what, time is it? what time is it, Justin? 9.30. Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh. It's amazing. Oh. Some bass fishermen don't lie. Come here, girl. Come here. Come here, come here. Come here. There we go, baby. There we go. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. That's Bassmaster Live right there. Come on, baby. Look at that one, folks. Oh, let's go. Come on. I knew those were bass down there. Just tough to get them to eat. Okay. We need four more of those. Come on. I got 212. Three pounder? Three and a half. Oh, three and a half. Three and a half. Ooh. Mm. He's, a th he's back in the lead. Six, six lead change today. Thomas wanting to do his best for Bassmaster Live today. Man. He's leading the way, first one to three, and he is back on top again. You feel a little obligated when your family drives 13 hours from Michigan yeah. to come watch your you way think. in. You need to bring him something to weigh in for sure. Okay. He's getting the job done. Talk to us about that last fish Man, it's, uh, I was working, I came out here a little deeper than I have been fishing. And I just noticed, uh, I just noticed some, some looked like bigger, bigger fish and these bait balls that are out a little bit for me. So I kind of worked it for, I gave it a good 15, 20 minutes of casting on these big fish with a drop shot and they just absolutely pummeled it. So and this ended up being a really good one. So we're gonna switch tactics just a little bit. I haven't done it much this week, but um, I do, uh, I do fish, uh, Demiki quite often back at home, so we're going to get a little drink of the dew and then get back after it. Oh, he's must feeling be a, it now. Must be a staple because people were commenting he was fueled by dew yesterday on his post when he said, I'm going, I'm second <laughs> going in the final of the day. And they said, look at that boy, fueled by dew. We know a few of those folks, don't we, Ronnie? <laughs> uh, don't look at me like that. No, nah, I'm I looking right at you. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so him and my camera guy, Austin Sherwood, they're like really close friends. And 
Austin's always giving him a hard time. Like, Bo, try to drink a bottle of water this month. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> now, I have to drink water. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I guess it's because I hit 30 now. I, I can't just do do. I have to have water as well. So. Have you tried Milo sweet tea? I have. I have. I heard is that a any guy good? who loves it's it. Pretty good. <laughs> it's a drink of champions, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Now, it's got water in it. It does, yeah, they made it. <laughs> Tommy, we see that five and a half or five plus pounder from Jack York. We, we set it up. If you're just, tu tu just tuning into FS1 with us, he was the one who had the farthest deficit. He was 10th place in the leaderboard, but there was an extra pound and a half behind between him and yeah. nine. Yeah. It kind of first through ninth was four and change, but he was another pound and a half behind ninth. Needed a, probably a 20, 20 pound bag if in hopes of catching up. If others slip, that five and a half looms a whole lot bigger. You know, Connor Jacobs four moves him from seventh to the lead. That five and a half moves Jack to top five, but he's going to need another one to kind of make up more weight again. And he's yeah, definitely a player in the EQ game yeah. right now. He's in ninth place. That's the bubble guy. Every single point he gains today is points that's cushion in the EQ race as well. Yeah, lots of important moves going on up and down the points leaderboard and the leaderboard for this tournament. The winner, remember, is going to gain access and find a spot in the Bassmaster Classic 2025. One state over in Texas. We have got plenty, plenty more to decide on this third championship day. St. Croix Bassmaster Open on Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven. Tonight, it's baseball night in America on Fox as Matt Olson powers the Braves against Aaron Judge and Yankees, where the NL Central leading Brewers battle the Padres. It all begins at 7 Eastern on Fox. Check for the game in your area. Here at the St. Croix Bassmaster Open, Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven. Here with Ronnie Moore, Mike Sukan, and our guest commentator, our analyst this week. Let's go. World champion, Justin Hamner, winner of the Bassmaster Classic. About 75, 80 miles up the road here. Earlier this year at Grand Lake, we're going out to Alabama's Trey Swindle. Big one. Big one. I ain't big, but I'll take it. Dang, I thought he was big. Heck, I hope he measures. Oh, yeah. Hey, we're working on something. It ain't much, but I didn't break my leader, and we're catching some. Got that fish lung turned on. Keeping bad boys alive. You know it's been a day when... <laughs> When you catch a small one, you say, at least my leader didn't break this time. <laughs> you know it's been a morning you can for tell Trey Swindle. Some of what's happened he's, today he's just had, from he's that. He's been going yeah. through it. I'm <laughs> glad he's got that worked out. <laughs> Cody Meyer put his first keeper That's in about 15 one, minutes ago. Ooh, Ooh. I like that. That's a really good one. Mm. Come here, baby. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, man, that's what we needed right there. Look at that, you fall bass. Whew, that feels good. Hey, just caught our second keeper. Nice, oh, probably three and a half pounder, but uh, that's a start. We need we need four more like this to, to do anything today, but yeah, that'll work. I knew that was a good one as soon as she bit. That was bigger that when it jumped. Oh, on, man. man. Heard the cannonball. They thought somebody was jumping off We're the dock. Rolling. Yeah. Let's do it. Having a good year. She made all five cuts. Yeah. One of the EQs. This is his first top 10. Great year. I think he's the only person now with Evan Kung slipping this week and not making a check or making a top 50. I think Cody Meyer is the last mm -hmm. one who stands. 
Atlantic Coast Ray Bear up the just missed 46. Oh, that's a co- okay. So then Dakota's made a top 50 in every event, then too, I believe. But checks go to 45. Yes, checks go to 45. Matt Adams with one so far today. That might be a better fish. That's a better fish. I don't know. Might keep. I think it'll keep, maybe. Close. Not what I'm looking for, but might keep. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Number two. It's a baby, but it's number two. I am going to weigh him. Yeah, I better, so you can put something in, but it's a baby, baby. I knew there had to be one on this point. One ten. Baby. I'm just glad to know I can get bit again. Good night. What in the world? One ten, but it's a keeper. Going to move him up into fifth place. Just bumping down Jack York one spot. Normally, right there. normally at this point in the day, Tommy, three and a half hours, three hours and 45 minutes in the fishing day, most of our top 10 in tournaments will have a five fish limit. So right now, then it's about who's going to upgrade in the afternoon. This tournament's still unfolding because Bo Thomas, who is our leader right now, started the day in second, has three keepers, and that's the most of anyone in our yeah. field. No one is safe and secure until you get to five fish, which he's still at least two fish away from that. Oh, yeah, that leaderboard can get mixed up real fast. Especially if number five for someone is like Jack York's and it's a five-pounder, then you're like, man, I've already got my kicker and I feel my limit, that kind of thing. It would be huge for someone. We're a ways from Cullen is what you're saying. When Cody Meyer catches that fish, has his second keeper, and he's only 5'11 behind the leader, he's got two fish. That's, that's, that's what Jack one by York the way. caught. Yeah. yeah. Edwardsburg, Michigan, college career at Western Michigan. You see that Van Dam on the back of his jersey, ah. not far from Kalamazoo. And no, that's right. You know, growing up, said going and listening to Kevin at all these different seminars and stuff. Just you know the things he got to learn from him. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Fished a share of Muskegon. And He's going to be one to area. look out for on St. Clair, too. Oh, man. Yeah. That's about his backyard. It's uh, right there underneath it. Connor Jacob was on top for a while. He's now about two pounds behind Bo Thomas. I would say if you're if you're around the top 30 in points, you still have a shot for the top nine. Last year that wasn't really a feasible thing. Connor manages to get one out of there. I don't know if that one's gonna go 14. It may. There's a lot more skew and error this year with every with a lot of people having a tough one at Santee Cooper or one stop along the way has really tripped them up. Not a keeper for Connor Jacob. So like somebody this. like a Garrett Paquette who calls Lake St. Clair home, or or at least very familiar with it, 32nd, 664 points. He's about 130 from being in the qualification. I think with four events left, you can still do something like that. Yeah, our leader, Fothergill, has an 83rd. Uh, Tucker Smith, who's in there, has 144th yes. place finish. Since everyone has slipped, if you've slipped so far, yeah. you may be on the outside looking in, but you stack three or four good finishes at the end of the year together. We saw Tyler Williams last year 
27th going <laughs> into the down. last three events, gets a win, a top 10, and a top 10, and he's inside and makes the Elite Series. So. I wonder how far down somebody can come back right now, though, in the points. They kind of, there's, it's kind of tied up in the, in the middle. A couple of leaders are pulled away, but a little bit further down, yeah. there's some spread after about 22nd place. We'll see for sure. These next couple of events will have really tight weights, so the difference in being 40th versus 80th could be just two pounds. Well, this week we've had five new guys jump into our top 10 of AOI. Favor, Tucker Smith, Loberg, York, and Messer. Speaking Take of the leaders from Father Gill. Oh, wow. Uh -oh. That's a good. <laughs> I have a dog barking in Oklahoma. Go Ike on him, Sooch. Oh, that's a good seven pounder. Oh, seven, seven pounder, he says. Oh boy. When I saw that thing jump out of the water, we only got a glimpse, but it was amazing. Like a coming out Easton, of Easton's weighed in a five plus this week. He caught a nine at Okeechobee earlier this year, so that's right. Big fish have shown up at clutch times for Easton. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> We're right back in it, baby. One bite and we're back. Oh That's my what we goodness. Were just talking about. More than back. Oh. That's a pretty fish. Oh, and he's going to weigh it for us. Come on, baby. Oh my gosh. I can't even talk. Before this fish, he's seven. How far behind? How big is that thing? Four fourteen, four, 14 behind. And there's it. Not for long. Some. Scale won't turn on. There we go. Oh my gosh. What you got? Eight and three quarter. Wow. Did he just say eight and three quarter? I guess so. Oh my goodness. What, what a. Fish. You're the eight and three quarter. Eight and three quarter? <laughs> oh you gotta grind now, guys. We're right back in it. Yeah, you're right back in oh, it. Oh, you, you, you're better than back in it. <laughs> oh, oh wow. My goodness. Go from got time. four and three quarter Still down to four thing. pound lead. Two pounds better than the big fish over the first two days with 195 guys going each day. Oh my goodness. I wasn't expecting that one. No. I don't think many people were predicting <laughs> eight pounders, hey. nine pounders here, but there you are. Wow. How about Lake Eufaula and Easton Fothergill? When it's your year, it is your year, yeah. obviously. How about having two for over 10 pounds now for Easton? That's a uh. good limit this week. <laughs> two for 10, he's still getting started. This is getting back in the lead. Oh my <laughs> goodness, you talk about the bombshell of the tournament. It was just that one right there. My Easton Father Gill, we have got big things happening here. The St. Croix Bassmaster Open. St. Croix Bassmaster Open on Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven, sponsored by Minn Kota. By Bass Pro Shops. And by Skeeter Boats. Big things going on here on Lake Eufaula right now. This is our fifth stop in the Opens this year. St. Croix Bassmaster Opens, presented by Seven and Easton Fothergill, has just blown this thing wide open Ooh. with I think it would be conservative to say 
totally unexpected, almost nine pound bass here about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, when you have the biggest bass of the tournament earlier this week and it's in the six pound range, and you've had this much pressure, this much time, you never think you're gonna see even bigger by almost three pounds coming in. Oh my goodness. That was a spectacle. I have a feeling we'll show it to you again. It, we're it, just like I said when he answered the phone last time, I said, you're so much better than we thought you were. <laughs> Yeah, so I had hit about five different spots and nothing was going on. And as I was leaving that spot, I'd been hitting stuff that I've been hitting all tournament. And thought just came across my mind, like, hey, let's 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 try some new water as we're as we're working our way back down the lake. And I don't know why, what well, made me stop here, but I, I just pulled into here. It's a nice little pea gravel point. It just sets up perfect. I didn't even catch one here in practice, but and I roll up here and. The deal this week, you gotta be around the shad. Like enough shad to where I feel like I'm going cross-eyed looking at my units. Like, you gotta be around that much shad. And I pull up here and it's just a wall of shad. And I get just inside the shad and I, I pan out on that point and they're just dotted up. And then I caught that big giant one. But I'm actually just repositioning the boat right now. We're gonna whip back around. I'm gonna fire lengthwise on that point. They got a little bit of smart to my worm, so I'm gonna try some other stuff on them. Maybe we can make something happen here. But just gut decisions, man. It's been the name of the game all week for me. Never know where the next bite's gonna come. Started third place, five ounces out of the lead. Man. He said, Father, you What a calendar year it has been. Oh, Best college team in the world with the team of the year. Had so many chances at high finishes and then makes it to the bracket, goes through brain surgery, ends up winning individual, beating guys like Tucker Smith in the finals. Now he makes it to the Opens and he's leading the points race. Catches it eight and three quarters time. Yeah, yeah just not, <laughs> makes not it enough to just It's like the 19th best thing he's done this year. <laughs> I think that qualifies for Mercury move of the day. I think everyone would agree on that. Let's take a look at Easton, Fothergill, and Rapids, Minnesota, and this catch right here. Started the day in third, Tommy. Fell as far as seventh. He only had a pound and a half fish. So far today, but Justin adding a second one and it being an eight and wow. eight plus pounder goes a long way to now patience for the limit. That goes a really long ways. I mean, that right there, that's unexpected for sure. But that is taking the place of what most guys would say three fish is very good to have. Oh, three for eight, 12, and he's Love got it. one. <laughs> that, is that right there. I'm sure the fish are like, really, dude? And normally when someone catches an eight and three quarters, Tommy, we say that tournament is theirs, but with him still not having a limit and others not having a limit, uh, plenty of story left to be told oh, in this day, no doubt about it. No doubt. They're going to be fishing all the way until 2 o'clock Central, 3 Eastern time. But, man, we have seen a ton of fish catching this morning. And uh, a place that's supposed to be tough and stingy has turned out to be very, very entertaining. And you see a guy like Trey Swindle set the hook six, seven times today, but only one in the boat. Ty Faber said he's been lucky all week. He's the leader, though. He catches one. Bo Thomas, very confident coming into the final day. Three catches so far today. Andrew Loberg, our first bite, still stuck on just that one fish. But 9.30 was when they said it was going to start picking up. It has done that and more. There's going to be a lot of moving around during this break, no doubt. What a day it has been and more to come. You can check it out on Bassmaster.com. we got that weigh-in coming up at 2 Eastern again. Again, 3 o'clock 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 Central. And we will see you next time Man. here on Bassmaster Live. Goodbye from Eufaula, Oklahoma. You're watching a BASS presentation. The St. Croix Bassmaster Open on Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven. This is the second half of our fishing day here. We have entered it right now. Eastern Fothergill, our leader in points through the 
Open's EQ system is also the leader of this tournament right now as it stands. Easton Father Kill on the strength of a giant, which we will show you undoubtedly multiple times in the next couple of hours here. Just a real game changer for him that took place right before we went to the break about an hour ago. Bo Thomas in second place. Connor Jacob has moved up from seventh all the way up into third place. Trey Swindle got things back on track today. He's up in the top five. We've got a lot of developments out here. Take you down to this 100,000 acre plus impoundment here. Lake Eufaula on the Canadian River in East Central Oklahoma. Let's take you down to Andrew Loberg. He was the first one on the board this morning with a two, was. two plus pounder, almost a three pounder, and since then just Has crickets. Not. He's got two in the boat. No, one in the boat, excuse me, at this point. decent one. Uh, bites are tough, man. Bites are tough. But buddy, we are going to try our best. Three keepers bites, have to be 14 man. inches here. Oh yeah, that's a, another two and a half pounder. He's he's on the right quality to get to a 15, 16 pound bag, but the quantity only two keepers so far. You know, it's amazing what you go that long stretch without catching another keeper. I mean, I've done it so many times where you might catch one or two first thing in the morning, and then just a dead stretch. When you finally get that next bite and the next fish in the boat, it can completely change your mentality. You're like, okay, we're back in this. Get that second win, make something happen. It looks like he kind of switched up. You know, earlier he was fishing that jig shallower. He came with, oh, oh, hooked up again. See? As you were saying. It's yeah. crazy how quick it can happen. I mean, you get that mentality of, all right, I figured something out. It, it, you can make it happen in a hurry. There's a little group from here. <clears throat> Come on, baby. Yeah. Right on cue. Yeah. <laughs> That's the second time you've called him today. You called the first big flurry today. It's like you do this for a living or something. Yeah. yeah. What's, what's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> and now, he, now Andrew's probably going from the, am I ever going to get another bite today to catching two on back-to-back -back casts? And now you're like, I could fill my limit yeah. real quick here. And we could all of a sudden just and then that can allow him to open up and go back to what he thought was the best way to catch those bigger fish. If he has that limit, having two or three hours left in the day of, hey, I got a couple hours, I just need to go put a couple big ones in the boat. That's how guys get dangerous. Let's take it out to our tournament leader right now, Easton Father Guild, who also happens to be the points leader in the Open ZQ competition, very, very important component of every stop this year. And I didn't really want to Bassmaster Open. I don't think anybody really wanted to leave FS1 after <laughs> what we saw Easton in the show. Right with. when we were about to get, have our <laughs> midday break, that happened. What Unreal. we'll show you in just a little bit. And it was phenomenal. Just got back to where I caught that big one earlier. Matter of uh, fact, let's take a look cool at it right now. Right. Yeah, <laughs> <Why don't laughs> I can't we? wait any longer. I want to see it again. <laughs> oh, oh, oh whoa, whoa. let's let's oh. no, let's wait for the fish catch here. Good keeper. Oh, this is a 10 pounder. No. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Ooh, keeper three. Keeper number three. I sure hope he put keeper one and keeper three on the opposite live well than the other one. Like I don't skinny, but I'd be afraid to be in the live well with an might get eaten. Before he caught that, he was had the lead with two fish for 10 pounds and four ounces. One of those fish weighed two pounds. 
So you do the math, Doing the math. and then <laughs> we'll give you the visual to go along with it. This oh, is what this happened oh, about an hour and 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Justin, have you seen an eight and three quarter pounder jump that high out of the water? I honestly can say I don't think I've ever seen one jump like that. I mean, when they get that big, usually it's just the wallering at the top of the water, you know, kind of can't even get the body out of the water. That one had acrobat. Almost looked like a pickerel or a pike or That's a what, musky jumping. When I first saw it, I thought it was a pike jumping out of the water. <laughs> Jeez. Such, before this fish, Big Bass of the tournament was in the sixes? 6-13 yesterday from uh, Cody Meyer. 6-6, day before Andrew Loberg. Hey, the uh, you follow Lake record is an 11-9 caught 2012. It beat a 10-5. Wow. Mm. He's still three pounds under, but look at the time this of year. This isn't, yeah, a post pawn, eight and three quarters, he says. He may fudge a little bit, too. Lowered it just a oh hair, maybe. Oh, my God. That is a tank. Just look at the eyeballs popping out on her. <laughs> and when he, when, he, when he weighed it, said the weight, started laughing, held it up sideways for the camera, and it was zoomed out the entire camera frame. Yeah. 8-12, when it is an 8-12, ladies and gentlemen. Hands were shaking, we saw. York with the... Big one, and then we went to where I was originally gonna go. Before I caught that big one, uh, wasn't happening. So, and I have an isolated boulder right here that I had marked in practice. So, in my, that school where I caught the big one right there. So, I decided to stop here and it paid off. Got my third keeper, not a big one, but Glad to have them right now. I'm just going to ease my way up to the school here and hopefully pick off one or two more out of school. And, but yeah, we still have plenty of time to make something happen. That big one. A little bit of a wind problem there. He's got, got him right facing into the wind, Easton Father Gill. But uh, man, what? That, was, that was a lake fort. Class. Not to belittle your Lake Fork performance, Justin, with yeah. the 11 pounder <laughs> over there. But uh, Justin Hamner is our guest analyst here. In case you're just picking up with us now, we got a we got a a, a star in our midst here for sure. You know, I'm just um, having fun watching it. You know what's cool watching Easton? He is very analytical. If you heard him talking earlier about how he was lining up these casts and you know. It almost reminds me of uh, DeChambeau, the golfer, how analytical he oh, is yes. when he's do, breaking down the putts and stuff. He seems like he's one of those just super smart guys that's breaking down the numbers kind of differently than what you know we're used to seeing. I'm just kind of go out there and hope I can catch a fish. <laughs> I still you can see him shaking after catching that. You kind of got excited down at Fork when you caught your big one too, you oh, guys' yeah. breath get. <laughs> you had Whew. seen that fish for, for a heavy. couple days in a row. It had been on that same stump every single day, and I mean, I actually fished for it that morning too. Um, I would come in there, throw that jerk bait by it, and every day it would just come off the top of that stump and go straight to the bottom. Actually, it was sitting like kind of three quarters way up that stump, but that final day when I came in there that afternoon, it was sitting on top of it, and I guess it had just turned aggressive because as the jerk bait was coming towards it, it comes off the stump and met it halfway. <laughs> like, it was ready. But yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. I got to start thinking that it might have been a carp or something. Well, that big one was the seven. fifth part of the fifth tournament in a row for you, which you'd finish, finish 21st or better, which kind of sets us up for what we're about to see next because we went to the state of Oklahoma after we left Lake Fork. Yeah. And we had what, are, what is called the Bassmaster Classic, the Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic. Heard and of it. I want you to take a look at uh, what went down here. Everyone not familiar with Justin Hamner is going to get real familiar real fast. That's this is a wire-to-wire -wire victory, <laughs> Justin. You just, just took the lead on day number one, and it just never, you landed in the right places. I really did. That, that whole week was so special. It was a weird feeling going into it. I, I was... You know, building off of that momentum I had at Fork, you know, catching the giant yes, fish, sir. my highest Elite Series finish, like third, all the momentum in the world, confidence in the world, going into this one, I was, I was ready. Yeah. 
You said I just got to keep it simple, keep it slow, and you said I, I think I'm going slower than anybody. That's why I'm winning. I really do. I mean, there was guys coming through those same areas that would just blow through there because you could not see these fish on live scope. You had to just pick apart the cover, you know, almost like, you know, when you see Greg Agney fishing treetops and just picking it apart with a jig or something like that. It was almost like that, except I was using the jerk bait, get those fish to come out. Ugh. What a great victory. What a great Fun. classic champion now. He is the face of bass fishing. We're lucky to have him here today, the great Justin Hamner. And we are looking at our leaderboard unofficially right now. It's still Easton Fothergill on top. He had a massive lead when we took our midday break. But Bo Thomas has cut into that significantly. He's got five fish in the live well as it stands right now. Mm -hmm. Connor Jacob coming up from seventh place to be a part of the conversation for sure. And more to come momentarily. Fishing into the second half of the final go. day, championship day of the St. Croix Bass Master Open on Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven. And guess what? As of this morning, we're also in the second half of the season for the Bass Master Opens. And that is a, a big, big uh, thing playing in the background there. Time starts to run out from here on out. Everybody's <laughs> got to watch their position, especially those in the EQ program trying to make it to the Bass Master Elite Series. Of course, now. You want to win this tournament as well. That's also a big deal because you get to yeah all get to ten play in the Bassmaster eligible. Classic next year. All ten are eligible. Nine yeah. shots on goal, like Such was talking about. Chances at the Classic for if you fish all nine events, you yeah. get all those opportunities. And Connor Jacob, who caught a four pounder earlier, is trying to punch his Classic ticket. That one looked like a good one. Connor with four um, already in the we'll live play it safe, just in case. Yeah. Okay. Stay down, dude. On Bass Truck, he's three pounds, one ounce out of the lead. Uh, nothing crazy, but he will help. Woo! Three pounder. I'd be close That's to making wild. up that Did difference. I not expect that here. Seems like he hadn't expected That's anything today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you gonna go? Now we gotta get rid of that one pounder. We gotta get back. Yep, another three. Another three pounder. Perfect. Put him at or near a tie with our leader. I can see why Easton it's frustrating when, uh, when we play the fish and then I'll tell y'all the exact weight. Yep, or they say that they stink and are lucky and then they continue to catch threes and I'm trying to figure out what's the key to them actually doing it. Just you know? luck. <laughs> Just luck. <laughs> oh, Thomas now find himself. Actually, he'll be moving down to third place if we've had yeah, a um calculations right obviously by the by bass track you know it, it didn't it didn't go to plan but i mean day's not over it's still still got a lot of time i'm just gonna i'm gonna really try to put my head down and focus and try to keep fishing as hard as i can um i don't know i'm i'm a little confused on i mean maybe it's the wind switching uh it could be that it was that it's high skies today and no clouds there's not much I can, uh, much much else I can do. Um, I did end up losing one, which is, I'm, I mean, I've lost two, which is, you can't do that on Championship Saturday and expect to expect to do well. But you know, we're gonna persevere and keep going and try to get try to get a couple good ones. I mean, four or five pounders go a long way, and I know in practice I got big ones to bite, so I'm not worried about it being being is the way it is, but we're just going to keep fishing and keep going and try to still win this thing. I mean, it's anyone's game. The weights were tied at the start of the day. Uh, I don't know what the other guys did, but I'm assuming if my bite was, uh, if my bite was tough, I, I, I got to assume that a lot of the guys that were doing the same thing I was, I mean, it was, it could have been hard for them. 
but that's uh that's pretty much it. I know uh I'm gonna try to bring my uh inner spirit animal out like Z train and just you know try to catch some bass. Try to make some TV for for everybody. I mean this is I mean you don't get the opportunity to try to win all the time so I mean that's what we're gonna try to do. Bo's best one came about two hours ago. Three and a half pounder. Filled out his limit about an hour ago. Everybody's kind of gone in flurries, and yeah, he's probably had a, something you could call a flurry, but he has caught fish a little bit more frequently and had opportunity at more bites than most people other than maybe Trey Swindle. He was the first one with the limit, I guess. Yeah, first one with the limit. Easton Father Gill there trying to, among other things, do what he did last September, which is punch his ticket to the Classic. Uh, he did that at the Bracket Championship. He's trying to do it from the Opens. I don't think we've ever had anyone qualify for two Ooh. straight Classics using those two venues. Yeah. I know we've had a couple of nation, back-to-back -back nation qualifications before. I'm trying to think. Um, I know two or three college anglers who used their year as the representative on the Opens to qualify for the Elite Series, but to use their year to qualify for the Classic and then possibly down the road still the Elite Series, I, don't, I can't remember off the top of my head anybody who's done that. and also a former high school All-American. So if you're looking right there on that live scope, it doesn't look like there's hard, um, looks like there's some shad and stuff like that. There's a big boulder in the middle. But if you look at the bottom right there and you see those bright, almost like spikes sticking up, that's gonna be the rock. But also that's what these fish are. So they are so sucked in tight to the bottom. I know when he turned when it went kind of off the ledge a little bit, there was there was several fish right there stacked up on the bottom. Everybody wants a picture perfect, clear graph, but watching some of the best guys with their electronics, especially when we're plugged, you like it maybe a little bit more sensitivity or contrast or gain, like just to see something. You don't need to see the perfect shape of a fish. You just need to know its existence. And so sometimes that lends itself to more clutter, but it's a higher sensitivity or, or whatever. Absolutely. I the way I set mine up, I like to turn off all of the like um, noise reduction, stuff like that. That's what's going to give you a better picture, so to say. But I want to be able to see everything. So I don't want that getting filtered out. And that's what you're seeing on his. You know, you are seeing a little bit of clutter and stuff like that. But that's just so you can get the most detail. And if you know what you're looking at, you're going to see things that if you had those other settings where it might be cleaner, but you're going to be missing things. Yeah. Ronnie, Tristan McCormick's going to be yeah, mad at you. He I know. Me. Yeah. Hank Weldon just texted me. Okay. 2021, Tristan McCormick beats Tucker Smith college. on the Alabama River down in Wetumpka, wins Tucker the college Smith. bracket, makes the classic for 22 and represents the college series, okay. wins Hartwell later that year to make the 2023 classic. Ah, so, so it has great been Tristan did it. It has yes. been done. Okay. At least it hadn't been done like five times. Like it was only one, you know, like, you know. <laughs> How did you forget that hair? I know, I know. Well, we got Looking people like Hank and 
It's Thank all, you. It's yeah. all those things. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I always tell Hank to keep me off. Oh, oh yeah. There's, there's the leader. There's that hook set. out for him catching another one pretty quick here. Adam Jacob had yeah. the lead at 818 he called this him morning. before yeah, momentarily. Absolutely. I favor our only angler from Colorado in the EQ's lineup this year. A Bassmaster kayak fishing kit draws more people, more eyeballs every year because more people are interested in seeing how these guys catch big ones out there. The uh, Yamaha Wrightwater's Bassmaster Kayak Series had a big tournament on Gunnersville. Big bass tournament there. Another big bass tournament before that. On Possum Kingdom out in Texas. We got another one coming up uh, before too long on the eastern seaboard. So you definitely want to check that out yeah, as the well. Susky. The Susquehanna River. That ought to be an interesting one as well. So a lot of people interested. Kayak is a great gateway to catching big fish with the Bassmasters. Use the QR code. Go to Bassmaster.com to check it all out. I need to get in on that one. Well, yeah. Steve Owens you're a natural. has been doing be great. Natural, Justin. We've had Amber. some elite winners. De Palma, Ike. <laughs> Ike, yeah. We'll take Palma. a break and be right back. St. Croix Bassmaster Open Lake Eufaula in Oklahoma, presented by Seven, serving up some pretty good bass fishing today. On Bassmaster Live, our evidence is, uh, well, you can see some of it on the leaderboard right there. One ounce separating first from second, so we got your tight competition for you there. Big fish, yeah, the man on top has caught one just under nine pounds, eight pounds and 12 ounces. So we got your big fish and we got your importance of the tournament. Seven of our top 10 right there are in the top 10 positions points wise for the EQs, which is what a big part of this, this, uh, this uh, open series is all about. So we have got all of all the big, uh, we're hitting the big numbers here today. We're leaving the South also, Tommy. Yes. In the next three months, After we're this leaving week. the South. The next three tournaments will be up north, so if you are a southern strong angler, you better have gotten points today or this week, because the next time you'll be below, you know, in southern territories, it'll be Hartwell to end the season. Something to think about there as well. We're just past the halfway point in the season, Andrew Loberg. Comes from California, but lives in Alabama now, and he's hooked up again. Oh, big waves. They crash. Yeah, I'm good. Hopefully that's a keeper. I'm a mess right now. Big waves, drop shot in the hand. B14, come on, baby, we need it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a grind. I know this fit. Probably not going to be the one to win it, but we need five to start off. One and a half. He had one keeper 20 minutes ago. Yep. Now he's got we four. We need five to get the party started, and then we hunt for some burgers. That's exactly what I'm thinking. You get those five in the boat, calm down a little bit. He's got, he figured something out. It took a while, had that long time without a fish, but. Yeah, one and a half. He's feeling it. It's amazing what just having five fish in the boat can do to your mental state. Even though you know, hey, mm. I probably don't need to weigh these in, but just getting those five in the boat, then being able to free you up to go try to catch those big ones. Helps a lot. Jack York started the day in 10th place. Jack has moved up to eighth. He's got a couple of fish. Seven, Seven and a half minutes. Yeah. Man, still a slow day. Um, I got those two plugs or spoon fish, but I don't know, this wind, as you can tell, it's making it pretty difficult to scope around. So I'm trying to crank this group a little bit. They uh, are kind of weird about how they set up. 
They're not really like our fish back home in Texas. They kind of just roam around this one little, I don't know, I guess a point, but pretty tough. Um, thinking about switching it up. We're getting some dirty water and throw a chatty and a square bill around, but I wish this wind wasn't kicking so bad. I think I could catch that uh, school pretty good on a spoon, but it's been pretty tough today. What's the deal with these Texas guys being... Uh... We'll see. We still got some time out here having a blast in Oklahoma. Some big Remember boys. If we put him up against Lee Livesey, what been would a happen? It's fun week, man. In a fist fight? Is that what you said? said? Absolutely. <laughs> Like they Straight should. up fist fight. <laughs> You're gonna say a beard contest. Pinged <laughs> up on bottom. Jack's a big boy. Try dragging him. That spoon is literally the only thing I can get that group yesterday and that other group across the way over here to fire on for some reason. But it's been a good week, man. No complaints. No matter how today shakes out. I'm going to try and get three more like that one big one we caught earlier, but I don't think it's going to happen on a spoon right there with these waves. Show you that big one he caught earlier today. He's talking about the fish he caught about two hours and 20 minutes ago. Jack York was uh, kind of struggling out there. He's had one fish, small one, mm -hmm. after uh, two, three hours of fishing, and then he gets a hold of this one. Yes. Freaking neat. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, boys. He's starting to pop up. Good one. Probably a five. That went in five and a half for Jack York as well. And hey, fortunate to get it. Not only was it like outside the mouth because the way they react to a spoon, normally when you have that big of a weight, with the spoon weight leverage, you better boat flip those fish. The fact that he could get it so easily and quickly at the side of the boat allowed him to be able to land that fish without losing it at the side of the boat. Justin. Oh dear. Cam daddy. This is not going to plan. I think I figured out what the deal is. It's 100% because I don't got bait fuel on my stuff. Like I'm, I'm, 100% convinced. There's one way to you know, fix we, that. we uh, chatted about it last night that I needed to use some bait fuel. But I just, just make sure you're doing a good job on there. Don't, don't try to get crazy like Z does, all right? Just, just be yourself, bro. Is he coaching you up? Yeah, he's, he's like teaching oh, me up kidding. through this. What? I needed that. <laughs> oh. You better, you better start like acting Z. right then. We've already, we've already done <laughs> yeah. four hours. <laughs> no, well, we're about to let it loose out. now. Look at the water like clarity nice with Matt no. Adams over there. How much dirtier it's it is. It's still crazy, hot. the difference. Ooh. Oh. Big old gar. gar. Yeah. Hamner, say a prayer or something. I need, I need these bass to bite. I know if I can get them to eat, it'll be good ones. I just... <laughs> Hit another, hit another oh, swig God. of that Mountain Dew one time, Bo. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me as well. Lord, let Bo catch a 12 pounder. <laughs> now, Tommy, he's been calling it. If that happened and with a lake record. I don't know, he's, he's, he's called the big flurries uh, of the day. He's called <laughs> a couple other big fish. I don't know what's gonna happen next. Oh, this is cool. I think the Mountain Dew is the safest call you've made so far. I think so. Still plenty of time.
you got to think that one of these guys are going to hit another flurry. It's just mm. a matter of time. Everybody said it was going to be after about 930 before they really started picking up. It seemed like there was a small flurry around 930. Easton caught that giant. There was a few other fish catches, but this time of year, it seems like that one o'clock, because these fish feed so much during the night, you know, in the summertime. So they're feeding during the night and then they kind of chill out Golly. morning time, midday, around one o'clock, they're getting hungry again. Trace Wendell hooked up. Fish had the strawberry moon last night too. Trace had multiple fish break off. He had one fish for a long time. Went on a little bit of a flurry, and I think this might be keeper number five, maybe? He's got five for seven and a half. Oh, he is. Come on, come on, come on. That gum spot. Come on, guys. He about whooped Get my book, but I got him. Flipped that one. He tried. He's going to call a little bit. I don't know which one. Let's find out. After his three and a quarter, all four of the other ones he's got in his life are one pound. One three is the biggest. They're all in between there. This one we'll try to cull with that one right there. Hey, coming up next week, starting on Thursday, full coverage of Smith Lake, Bassmaster Elite event, Coleman, Alabama. And rather than me try to sell it, Justin, why don't you sell it? You spent more time on Smith Lake oh, than Smith just about anybody. Anybody that has a pontoon boat, ski boat, y'all come out. I know y'all are already going to be there. <laughs> it's going to be a good time. Numbers? Either way. Numbers of fish. Will largemouth show up for some guys? It'll be a, mm, there'll be a couple key largemouth, but it's going to be spotted bass beat down. All right. Don't want to miss that one. June 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th. Right here on Bassmaster.com and FS1 on the weekend. St. Croix Bassmaster Open, Lake Eufaula, Oklahoma, presented by Seven. This is the final day action, started with well over 200 anglers. These are all of these opened this day and age. Competitive anglers, too. Ready to make it to the top 10, but only 10 got there, as you see. The man who's leading in the points is the man on top of the tournament. Again, we have to say it, Easton Father Gill having a year, a year like no other. Got that big one ounce lead over Connor Jacobs. Some great tight competition out here today. That's what we like. We've got about two hours fishing time, a little less than two hours fishing time. And you factor in travel and so forth for these anglers. Let's get back out to Trey Swindle. Fifth place. Slow start, but he's righted the, righted the ship, as you can see. Suits so just his with the oh my. So. Mm. <laughs> He's got the script. Either somebody caught a big fish or he done found another snack. Could be both. Cashews. <laughs> Big. Oh. Let's go, right?
Let's go, baby. Let's go. That's how you get it turned back around right there. Let's freaking go, baby. Mm, that's a good one. Looks almost like that first keeper of the day. Might be a little bit bigger. Not about anybody else, but I'm liking that hair Trey's got going. <laughs> it is, it's got it's out Bama, there. Bama bangs. Them Bama bangs are flowing. <laughs> It's good to see him get things turned around. I know he had some mishaps earlier, could have got spun out on, but he's making it happen now. He said he's very superstitious. He got a two McChickens with a so medium fry and a medium so drink. First update is we're gonna need a helmet and a mouthpiece for this ride back to the boat ramp. <laughs> Second update, it's been pretty slow. I mean, the wind's blowing. It's really hard to get my bait in front of the fish where it needs to be. But uh, we've made it work. We've slowly cooled our way up. We got, I just caught one good one. Um, so I don't know, I, I thought about running some backup stuff, but I didn't come here for that. I come here to win and I think the fish is here to win. I just gotta get my bait in front of them. So as of right now, we're gonna sit out here and pan around in this wind and see what we can do. A 4-1 game, 11 90s, 11 ounces out of the lead. Man, mm. he did get back on course, didn't he? I say he said on the phone he was very superstitious. Wednesday. We got people inner tubing everywhere, music blaring. What a time to be alive. <laughs> it's championship Saturday, baby. There's that swindle coming out. Yeah. And roll tide. Roll tide. <laughs> Two McChickens, a medium fry, and a medium drink on Wednesday. Had a big bag on day one. So he did the same thing, and last night he sent his roommates, you guys go get it and get yourself McChickens as well to keep the good energy flowing so he could try to win today. I, don't, I said, I don't know. So I was doubting the McChickens this morning, but maybe there it's an afternoon McChicken kick. You doubt the McChicken at your own peril, huh? <laughs> I doubted it one time. It got me. On the other hand, I, I thought he was wearing a helmet, so you know, I was thinking about a helmet and a mouthpiece. He's got some so. cushion for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Because us Alabama boys are so hard headed, we gotta have some cushion up there. If we can get it away from these stripers, get it down there to them big dots. We're gonna wait, we get through these waves first. That old front looker's hard to look at in these waves. I'd be curious to know what line he changed. You know, was he just using like super small six pound test and like just beeped it up or I wonder what that situation was. Honestly, I, it got me super fired up because there for a while, I really thought that all the big fish had left. I mean, I can see them on live scope and I kind of knew that wasn't true, but it was just very weird to me that I hadn't had a big bite yet. Um, it seems super tough conditions, especially with a wind. <laughs> and I know that, that, that bite right there goes a long ways in a tournament like this. So if I can cool that one little one with another four or five pounder on a tough day like this, I, I'm, I'm here for it. So we're gonna see if we can get one more, but I don't know. You see that mud line, <laughs> Easton's fishing. I don't think he was purposely fishing it, but where he's now sitting is has Man, became a mudline. it's so hard line. to get that bait in front <laughs> yes. of him with this wind. But that that mudline, due to traffic or whatever it is, that can reposition the fish. I mean, I've seen it so many times. Some of these lakes where they might be closer to the bank, and then you get that mudline, especially in clear water fisheries. Those fish that like to sight feed, you get that mudline in, and it it almost creates like a barrier. They'll just sit right on the outside oh, of yeah. that and you can just follow that mud line around and yeah, I saw that once at Smith Mountain Lake up there in Virginia. It looks, mm. it looks a lot like the traffic at yeah. this place and you can definitely see that was what was what was happening. Talked to Trey last night on the phone and he would love to be buzz baiting or fishing shallow this week. He said he did it last year and it burned him, especially with the changing conditions, uh, stress and pressure on places. So he said before Logan Martin, he fished for 28 days in a row 
exclusively targeting fish with live scope forward facing sonar to get better at it because he knew it might not be his favorite way to fish, but it was, it's essential if he wants to make a career of this. So he put it to practice for a month, had a good, good results at Logan Martin, knew this week it could be a deal, and he has been able to stay confident with it despite the lulls because he has put in that time on the water like Justin was talking about. These rookies and younger guys are just, whatever your weakness is, you got to go eliminate it. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I mean, right now I'm fishing this other school that I had close to my stuff. They're just uh, a lot of bait and stuff. I did catch some like more like spots and stuff over here, but the largemouth aren't biting. So maybe we can get lucky and catch a big spot. But yeah, hopefully we can uh, get one to come out of this little bait right here. They were schooling here earlier. Yeah. Well, depending where you are on this giant 100,000 acre lake here, you might have as little as one hour's fishing time left, believe it or not, on this day. Maybe a little more than that. Plenty of traffic though to watch out for. Get Plenty your helmet. Of fish being caught. Yeah, get your helmet, get your mouthpiece. And Come right on back. We will continue momentarily. The top ten I can always quote. St. Croix Bassmaster open at Lake Eufaula, <laughs> presented by Seven. We're busy here in the studio. Can you tell? <laughs> we got business to take care of. We got suits on the already. rampage over here. Fired up. <laughs> Easton Father Gale, the man who is tops in points on the EQ, the opens EQ circuit, is the man on top by a whole ounce in this tournament. Look at that, the top three within ounces there. We've got some good tight competition going on here and of course a lot of room to grow from the rest of our anglers including uh, Thomas Loberg, Faber, Adams, York, Meyer, Matt Messer as well. And Matt to get on the board, get things cranked up. Good, good final day. Started with over 200 anglers and we're going for that, that big trophy at this one. What we more? Ready for the last four of the season. What more could you ask for? With an hour and a half, to hour oh and God. forty-five minutes left in fishing, that we have three within a couple ounces. You know what we've been doing? We've been trying. We've been trying all year to, to top the first event. We kicked it off in such fine fashion here. It was hard to beat what we saw Scott Martin do down at Lake Okeechobee. Monumental, Tommy. Talked about the record, single day, largest margin of victory for the Opens, twenty-one pounds, biggest three-day weight, ninety-plus pounds. Scott Martin finally getting a BASS win. I think the last time we were at the Cluiston boat ramp there for a tournament was when Roland Martin won and he was just a child. Yeah, Scott Martin That's won. right. That was 20 something years. So he was so happy. Went on to a very different looking place up in the mountains, the Washita Mountains, Lake Washita. Jeremiah Kendi, pro angler for many, many years and a, a real pro at Washita. Lipless crankbait getting a victory in 2024. Never would have seen that coming, but Jeremiah rode that over some grass and some rock points and things like that at Washita. Beat another local, Matt Baker. That was a cool tournament to watch. That was really cool one to watch that. Then we go to Santee Cooper, and for the third tournament in a row, the local favorite prevailed. Kyle Austin, man, to see the way he ended last year, four fish on the final day of the season, missing the elites by 20 points. A simple keeper could have gotten him 20 points. For him to come back in the opens this year, to be having a good season for the most part, and then to be able to hold it together three days, pre high pressure plays on his home lake and be able to find something a little different to win. He utilized his home field advantage big time. 83-7 was second only to Scott Martins earlier. <laughs> earlier in the same year. So what a year it has been, but we weren't done yet. Still had another spot back to Alabama to Logan Martin and Josh Butler. Yet another local stick. A lot more people claimed this as their home leg. Tucker Smith as well. He finished second to Josh there. Butler. Josh got a good swim jig He's bite in the morning. Fish. Some shad spawn of fish, and then he waited all day long for that water to turn on. We thought he was making it up. The water was never going to turn on. It started to barely move. He went through a flurry, and boy, it didn't take much. He racked him up cold, four of his five initial fish, 
and that road, he rode that to the win later that day. Beating out Tucker Smith and Kyoya Fujita, that's pretty hard work. Yeah. He got it done. Moved him inside the top nine, heading into this event in the points race. I think he maybe has slid back just slightly, but in the tackle warehouse EQ standings, he is definitely going to be one to watch, especially the rest of the people. Yeah, see, uh, Josh Butler, short-lived. He fell just out. I think he's 11th or 12th, but 12th Easton, right now. our unofficial leader of the tournament, is the unofficial leader overall. And you see Father Gil Meyer, Adams, Faber, Loberg, York, and Messer all fishing out there today on our final day at Eufaula. Kung, this is his first slip up this year, 95th place. Dakota Ebear, no shock to me. To see Dakota, to see Cody Meyer, two of those guys coming in to fish the opens is something we were, it was highly anticipated. Yeah. It's been a lot of time in the boat today with Bo Thomas. I think he got us on the board first. No, I think it was Matt Adams got us on the board first and then first one to two fish was Bo Thomas today. He's had his limit for a while. Ooh. Rocking and rolling out there. Mm. Had seven lead changes today. I have a feeling there may be a couple more. You would think there would be. Does Easton have his limit yet? No, oh, three no. fish. He's just got three, three fish. fish. Wow. Two for two twelve and one for eight twelve. Yeah. That one's the size of three or four good fish. <laughs> it's certainly a bonus to have that. He's definitely leaving the door open though. I mean, if he doesn't finish out that limit. Whoa. That is some different color water right That's there. like a different planet right there. Here's one. God bless it. <sighs> Really? Just gonna be one of them days, ain't it? Would have kept. It wasn't a big fish, but would have kept. I'm gonna cuss. Let her rip. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days, I'm gonna put everything together. Like the bites are gonna get on the hook and. Fish are gonna stay on, which that thing ain't gonna help me none. I'm sure somebody gonna have 18 or 19, but I'd still like going five. My gosh. He has been. But that's intriguing that I got bit that quick on this Miracle Mile. Because that's a baby compared to normally what's here. He's the one that seems Golly. like he's mixed it up more than anybody. So annoying. Seen him fishing, I mean, this morning he was throwing the Domeki rig, and then he's fishing shallow grass, these rock piles. I mean, he, he's doing a little bit everything. has got so many holes in his damn mouth, he can't keep a hook in it. He said he would let one rip for us. I so checked this thing. Matt said that, you know, like he oh, thought no, his day one and two pattern of the grass was gonna start to leave him or had left him. He had just had enough to make it. So he was gonna almost fish brand new water and, and go for it today in other places. Didn't work out the first attempt he gave so he came to the grass now he's kind of said he was going to spend time in the miracle mile crank and he showed us the crank bay this morning in those early quick interviews at takeoff and so sick of losing fish like you said before you look on the bank right there I lost three pounder yesterday too those fish were sitting in those bushes probably a week ago for sure that, that water little, dropping out like that would have helped that's all he, he's targeting these fish they they've just pulled out of those bushes that shallow cover 
they're kind of just sitting right there on that drop, waiting to see what the water is going to do. So that square bill really cover a lot of water super fast. Just those fish that haven't made up their mind of what they're going to do. Last tournament with an organization not to be mentioned, about six or eight weeks ago, I caught a real good one off this point. Real good one. He's still there, catch him again. Well, the clock is ticking. It is the final day. This championship will be decided within the next two hours. Two hours and change. It could coverage right here. It could induce. Oh, go ahead, Tommy. Sorry. Oh, no, I just want to remind everyone, just make a program note for 3 p.m. Eastern time right here. Bassmaster.com is when the check-in and the weigh-in simultaneously begin. Hopefully one right after the other. We will have our champion at the end of the day, so you can see it right here, 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 Central, on Bassmaster.com. We'll be right back. Big event on the biggest lake in Oklahoma. That is, of course, the aforementioned Lake Eufaula. Really, really big waterway here, going all up and down US 69, going from McAllister almost to Dakota, I-40 there. And uh, we've got big, <laughs> Big doings happening here all day long. Eastern Fothergill, uh, man, really dropped the big bomb earlier today. A couple hours ago, he caught a almost nine pound bass. Take himself from the middle of the pack right to the top and here he stays. But ha that lead has been significantly diminished. He's just a, an ounce ahead unofficially of Connor Jacobs. Others in pursuit, Trey Swindle, third place and fourth place, that man right there from Michigan, Bo Thomas. Everyone is at a limit or close to a limit or in culling right behind Easton, but Easton still has two that can go to his bottom line with keepers four and five. Yeah, he could lose the lead a couple of times over and still be pretty deadly threat out there, still be the best bet to win. Ooh, that's a big one. and a half. Oh, excuse me, one pounder. Yeah. It looks like a two pounder at least. Maybe a pound upgrade. Possibly some. It looks bigger than that. I mean, these yeah. fish were given, just giving him all he wanted. All right, they gave him two pounds on that, so he moves up. Uh, just a pound out of the lead. Pound and one ounce out of the lead. So now you're saying the top four, Tommy, are all within one one? Yeah. Hmm. With an hour and a half to go? Oh. 
say them. There's a chance. Don't say, don't say the other word that, that might follow up in that conversation. Uh -oh. oh, that's oh, right. Don't say that. Don't this say is going to be, hey, we were, what was the longest day of the year, like Thursday or something, Friday? So there's right. plenty of daylight. They can go out there and have to fish well, extra This time would be the longest day of the year yeah, if that were to yeah, happen. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Tommy, we'll have to cancel our dinner plans and have dinner plans together. Yes, our lavish doing dinner that. plans that we have. Order Justin in. will have to fly out. We'll have to get him back to Smith Lake, but. Oh, that's right. If there's a tie. Oh, he oh, said it. He shoot. said it. We've been a the word. Kick him off. Kick him off this set. No I sudden death. Screw that up. I if wonder what that kid looks like on live things. scope swimming around. If he, you know. Oh. Yeah. You think he could see the tube? You don't remember that Bill Dance commercial? You think he could see the tube on his, on his ground? hundred. Oh, 100 she's, feet out there? Just, she's close enough, there ain't no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> I'll show you what that looks like next week. Look at that school of bass. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, kid fell off the tube. Uh, the smallest bag among our, among our top 10 was Matt Messer's 1310. We only have one angler over that today, Connor Jacob, with just over 14 pounds. So there may be some late day culls at hand. Because they are far below par from getting here. <laughs> Afraid Trey might get thrown out of the boat. <laughs> Look, I think his hair qualifies as a PFD. It may keep him oh, his head oh, above the surface think? for a minute. I guarantee he'll flip. Yeah. Ahead of Trey Swindle and Bo Thomas is Connor Jacob. Connor Jacob got off to a pretty good start early on today. About 8 a.m., he caught a three pounder, three plus pounder, backed it up with a four pounder. We can call him the Marina Man, Tommy. He has oh. been staying around marinas and up in the docks as well. Using a bait caster when we wouldn't expect it, but it's because of the terrain he's fishing around. Yeah. Marinas are one of those deals that I don't care where you go in the country, it's gonna hold a population of fish. It's like its own ecosystem. They can be very tough to get to, but it can definitely pay off. See right there, I mean, he is getting up in it. Yeah, that's why he's using that bait caster for that oh drop gosh, shot. Right that there. is <laughs> the dumbest way to catch a bass ever right there. That was, that was stupid. <laughs> that hook set is just Tom Bray not going great. off trying that though. <laughs> yeah, it was shortly happened shortly before that similar situation. Could be a special day. It's set up and had the right recipes for someone in seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth to come back and win this open. Connor Jacobs started in seventh and really wasn't that far behind. We've no, seen no. closer, or we've seen a, a much larger deficits at seventh than what he's had. Compressed, yeah, as much as they have. Three even off the lead to start the day, kind of Jacob. Well, he's one ounce off the lead right now, unofficially, so we'll call it a, statistically a tie. None of our weights we're showing you are legal as yet. They're all estimated. They'll be legal till we get to the weight. to where he started this morning. That might be number five. Little guy. Look how beat up that thing is, man. Ugh. We got five. It ain't a pretty five, but we got a five bass limit. We got a little bit of time and maybe, uh, maybe a little bit of 
bite and at the end of the day here yesterday I rolled up had four bites caught a four and a half another solid one and uh, so you just never know never know Ugh. But we do have some calling to do. Ronnie, do you know what the lot he's got on his live well is? It looks like a little window into the future. Like yeah. you can just keep an eye on them and, and check on them. Loberg currently eighth place in points. EQ standings. That is a, a good position to be in, but uh, no security. No security. You're not, <laughs> you can't take that to the bank yet. Yeah, I mean, uh, I made the move back to where I started this morning. Hopefully, some of these fish. Uh, moved back up, we got a little traffic, but um, I went out to the clear water, fished some brush, caught a few, um, but now we're back here, hopefully some bigger ones start pulling up. Because uh, like I said, late in the day yesterday and the day before, I caught a couple nice ones. Uh, they're far and few between, but I know they live here, so if we could just put this jig in front of one of them, uh, we could uh, make some good coals, man. You can see the bank, this, what they're calling the Miracle Mile, over to the left, like just how many boulders are sticking out and how, how much more cover would be covered up with water if it was two or three feet higher like it has been. So these fish have nowhere to go but to pull off to the next piece of cover, whether it's a stump or a bigger rock. And Andrew said it's kind of like, I'm just seeing some abnormal rock, something different in all the rocks around it and just assuming there's fish near it. Pitch your jig over there and drag it by it. Wait for the bump, wait for the bite. Andrew Wilberg fishing on there. You can see that uh, the water has uh, considerably gone down in the past week and a half here. It's a matter of feet, not inches, for sure. It certainly changed the setup here, but these anglers are dealing with it. And some of them are doing very, very well. <laughs> Look at the three at the top there. Couldn't get, uh, couldn't get much light in between those guys. Very, very close here at Lake Eufaula. We'll be right back. Getting closer and closer to the final hour of fishing here at the Bassmaster Open. St. Croix Bassmaster Open. Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven. Lake Eufaula in Oklahoma, gigantic reservoir here, over 100,000 acres and a lot of places to go and hide, but as usually happens, we get most of our anglers uh, bunched up, well, a lot of them bunched up in certain places or within sight of each other. Quite that tightened up today since we're down to 10 out of the original 220 or so. Man in the lead by a whole ounce, Easton Fothergill. <laughs> looks like he moved to a, ooh, a little bit dirtier water, it looks like. That one hooked up. It's a good one. For a guy who doesn't have a limit, it for sure is a good hey, one. Justin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're all and good. it goes to the bottom of the line. All good. You're commentating hey. like as if you were an angler with an hour and a half left and you don't have a limit. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Everything is. <laughs> That's Back all out good. Quick. Fourth fish. Is one more step a, closer. Not a chatterbait. Yeah, it looked like it. Yeah, like three bites within those two casts. So there's a 
Oh. Oh. Hold on. Man. It's about a two foot bar that's running along parallel with the boat here. And in practice, when the wind was blowing over the bar like this, there was a giant school on it. And they're here right now, and I just caught that little one and then caught that one, so. Mm. Tree. Uh, Gosh. And my heart sank when he sat in and out. But yeah, they're positioned on the back side of this bar here, out of the wind, and then obviously just waiting to ambush prey when they come washing over the shallow bar here. That fourth fish weighed two and a quarter pounds. He's up to 13, 12, 48 pounds, three ounces total, and he's about two and, and a quarter ahead of uh, Connor Jacob. Put it to the Jacob. floor and go. Put it to the floor and go and hold on. Biggin. If it's a bass, it's a biggin. If it's a bass, I saw her eat it. Oh God, oh gosh. Mm. Come here, baby. Come here. Oh, stay down. God, I'm on. If he loses it, he's gonna lose it, so oh. just a heads up. <laughs> Why it's are like you making me root for him to lose it? No, I'm not, not at all. We wanna <laughs> see Matt, we wanna see happy Matt, happy Matt. No, it's not, it's not fun. That sucker oh, got swallowed. Okay. Oh. That'll help. Let's go. <sighs> Maybe too little, too late. I knew I should have started on this stretch the whole time. I knew it. <sighs> Wasn't coming off. Oh mm -hmm. boy. She has got it deep. Yeah, she did. Smile yeah. one time, Matt. Come on. I'm not gonna check her. I'm gonna say. <laughs> Former pretty high level. He said he's played every level of baseball except on TV at night. You know, basically the uh, the majors. Yeah. And he said bass fishing gets him fired up more than baseball ever could. Yeah, have you watched baseball? It's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Eastern Fothergill now. He's got a, a lead approaching two and a half pounds instead of one ounce. So a little bit of breathing room, but certainly not enough when you got anglers out there with three fish. big ones here too obviously but where there's a bigger concentration of big ones if you're just joining us the uh, eastern caught an eight pound 12 ounce bass about two hours ago it really just changed the complexion of this tournament for sure, he was going from one place to another, decided to stop and fish in new water and caught that one. And now he's at a place, I'm, I'm assuming from what he's saying, he's fished this place before during this tournament. We have seen some big fish this year in the opens, Tommy. Yeah. Starting with Okeechobee, Randall Tharp's 10-3. The Wachita, very surprising 9-14 from Evan Kong and a 10-14 from Zach Gutramont. Santee, we had a 10-3 from Mark Hudson. Logan Martin, the winner, Josh Butler, had a 7-13, mm. and maybe Easton Fothergill with an 8-12. Mm. Big, but sure. That is some big fish. And then Justin Hamner on the Elite Series in 11-7. Yeah, don't forget oh, about yeah, that. Yeah, let's, 
How much first money first are, you, are you getting paid, Such, to just come <laughs> on? $1. seventy-six. I slipped him a bag of Cheetos earlier. Oh, <laughs> that's a cash. That'll do it. You see the like crunchy or the puffs ones? Like, He's both. Oh, okay. No, not the puffs. A variety the crunchy. bag. What? Crunchy. Oh, I thought we were friends. <laughs> Maybe this bar will pay off for one more keeper, Tommy. Get him keeper number five would be huge for Easton yeah, Fothergill. That would, that would yeah. put him in a lot better position for sure. As many bites as he's getting. Right now, yeah. yeah. Mm. Not a whole lot of fishing time left, but a whole lot to settle before we get to the way in there. It's good, close competition. Kind of championship day we love here on Bassmaster Live. There's no doubt about that could go all the way down to the wire, but we've got some, some fishing time left. So we'll step away for a minute and come right back. Well, an hour and 10 minutes officially of time left in this tournament before check-in. And that means in practical terms, less than an hour of fishing time when you count the travel for most of our anglers and where they are located on giant Lake Eufaula here. Final day of this tournament for the uh, wrap up this one we're going to head for three events in the north smallmouth country going to st Clair in july we're we'll going to leech lake in minnesota in august and september the mississippi river for both varieties probably yeah. up there and up you mississippi could, you could survive as a southern angler there oh, it's sure. got the yeah, great make it there great Good. fishing that we should see there for sure we've had some southern winters there for sure back out and want to catch up if you're just joining in with us now the big bombshell of the tournament day here championship day is this man Easton Fothergill our points leader already in the opens EQ competition caught one just under nine pounds eight pounds and 12 ounces around 11 o'clock this morning and totally changed the complexion of this this day the rest of the field caught up to him and he uh, caught one a few minutes ago put him back on top and he's still one left to go to a limit so you got to say that Easton's in a good position yeah one left to go to a limit once he gets that he'll have like maybe a pound and a quarter as a small one while Connor Jacob who's second has a one pounder so he can upgrade but this was the moment mm. we weren't sure when we heard the jump in just a moment just look at this oh my goodness we knew it was a big one he said seven pounder it was even <laughs> bigger than that Tommy we scoffed when we heard seven pounds. No, we didn't scoff, but we thought, wow. Oh my God. No way, not a seven pounder on this place. <laughs> Normally they start out bigger and get smaller as they get to the boat. That one started out smaller and it grew in size and stature. Oh, did it. <laughs> a little place he stopped in between. Places he'd pitched before, said, I just want to fish a little new water right here. And man, what a call. Saw some bait fish, looked over and they were dotted up a couple fish and the right one bit for sure and Easton bought this fish like an absolute pro. Final day of the tournament. It's been a few hours since you got a bite. You have one in the boat. Yeah. Plenty of reason to mess this up. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Still hadn't seen it at this point. Still hadn't seen it and there it is. I know this is the open, but oh. I got to give it to him. Easton, power pole replay. Oh, no, no. All right. That's <laughs> right. Uh, for that. Uh, absolutely. He earned that. You mentioned that right after 9.50 when he caught it. <laughs> yeah, that was the first thing I wanted to do. <laughs> I mean, come on. Kid catches almost a nine pounder on Ufala. Unbelievable. If you told us before the season started, we'd have a nine pounder at Eufaula In and June. Washita. Yeah. I mean, who would have believed you? So is Justin Hamner, he's got more power pole replays of the day than anyone this season, and now he's bestowing them when we don't even need to give that's, them out. That's when your cup that's runneth over. Impressive. That's what happens right there. That's a good problem to have. Yeah. If I'm going to come here and I'm going to be in studio, I'm going to Holler that yeah, out. You get, to, you get to use all the tools. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 you signed up for the whole trip. Yeah. Got to make get it rid of those small ones for Andrew. Starting to show up. Starting to show up a little bit. Got a bad one. Andrew's right beside now the ramp, too. Some cold. 
So he's going to get every bit of that an hour and ten minutes. Every minute to use. Man, if we could just get a couple more big ones, man. We need a couple fatties. Like an eight? A couple fatties. Yeah. I'm so glad they don't know the scoreboard because they would be running around you follow like the tubers with their heads cut off trying to find an eight. Where am I going to go to catch an eight pounder? I'd be riding that big boy inner tube like we saw earlier probably. <laughs> They're all making decisions. That thing's skinnier than the real. They think they need to make to try to win this tournament. There we go. Ugh. Got to keep plugging away, man. Head down and just go to work. It ain't easy, but there's a couple big ones out here still. We just got to snatch them up. Got plenty of time too, man. Plenty of time. Two and a half pounder got Loberg over 10 pounds, about 10 and a half. He's still Four and change behind the lead. That means he need to catch about a six pounder right now. Got a small of one and a half now. Second through fifth anglers are basically one bite away. Good bite, but one bite away from the lead. That would include Bo Thomas. He's three pounds, five ounces back. Got his limit though, so gonna take a couple of good ones or one giant. Close the gap. Day one, only 71 of 195 guys on the leaderboard got limits. And yesterday there's 57 limits. The average fish was around a little more than two and a quarter pounds, about two five, two six on day one. we see week to week here on Bassmaster Live. Of course, they're not, you know, reservoir, this sort of reservoir. They're not going to reload like they do on the Decatur Flats, I mean, for <laughs> oh, sure. for sure. It's a, it's a different proposition. You have to plan differently and maybe have some more places to hit. These 10 are representative of those who did that successfully. Thomas down from Michigan to fish the EQs this year. Let's take a look at his day today. One of the earlier ones on the board for us. First angler to two bass among our 10 who are fishing on this final day. Really confident. Confident that he was going to put it to him early this morning. So I was a little surprised when an hour into the day we started Bassmaster Live and he still, he just had one fish was slow to get started. But that mid-morning, 9, 9.30 time period, when he'd hoped to be culling by then, was really when he started to gain steam. Yeah. 
he has real happy kept to that, be here. Yeah, go ahead. He has kept that pink worm honest. I mean, talking to him last night, he said he was locking that in his hand. That's what he's caught all of his fish on all week. Um, one thing he did say that he was doing different than he thinks than the guys around him was he was actually using a half ounce weight on that drop shot just to make sure he's keeping it down there on the bottom because these fish are so closely related to the bottom. So he said he's wanting to keep in contact with the bottom as much as he can. He said he really thinks that made a difference. Definitely caught some small fish today too. I've spent a lot of time, you know, watching guys catching fish. Have you figured out what the pink worm is supposed to replicate? <laughs> <laughs> I know I do it for a living, but I still can't for the life of me figure out why they eat that thing so good. You know, when a when a bait fish Come gets on, eaten man. and shredded and oh, regurgitated, it, you can see the bloodline through the fit. No, I have okay. no idea. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> That's crazy. I, <laughs> Even harder to explain, you go back 20 years, it was a bubblegum colored worm, you know, which is, that doesn't make any sense at no. all. I don't know how that works, but I it don't worked. Know. What, what I would just assume, I know it works on clear, clear bodies of water as well, but as it goes deeper in the water column, probably a little bit darker light penetration, not as much, it may dull, dull that color down a little bit, and it may look more like a red worm rather than a yep, yep. pink, pink worm. I'm not sure. Don't try to bring science in. Hey, I'm not trying. Right. <laughs> Red line disappears underwater, so maybe it's clear down there. I don't know. That might be. Uh -huh. <laughs> science is not settled, apparently. <laughs> Easton Fothergill, a guy who's very scientific with his fishing, is the man on top right now. Connor Jacob hanging in there in second place. Trey Swindle, a rough start to his day, but got things turned around. He is definitely a part of the conversation as we get closer and closer to the end of the day. Lake Eufaula, last hour of fishing here at the St. Croix Bassmaster Open, presented by Seven Reels. We've got 10 anglers out of the original 200 plus. Man, it's hard. It's hard to get to that point right there, be in the top 10 at one of these opens here. So many good anglers you have to beat. And uh, man, you only got a couple of days to do it to make it here to final the championship Saturday. Justin Hammer, I'm sure you remember what it was when you were going through the opens back in 2020 to get oh my Bass goodness. Master Elite. You had to, you had to get several finishes, 30, 30th or better. That's not easy. Absolutely, it, it's such a mental grind because you have to be on top of it every single day. I mean, with the nine events now, you might could have a little bit of a slip up, but I mean, you still have to bring it every day and. These guys are doing it. Yeah. It definitely shows, you know, who's no. going to be the most consistent. I haven't seen anybody else. Does it ever make you think twice about trying to qualify again? Yeah, I'd like. prefer not to. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, there you go. Good. Oops. Uh oh. No. Oh. Oh my God. Andrew's making something happen. Yes, he is. That's going to help the cause. That's the second that biggest fish we've seen today. Going it has to, to be. I think it is. The big ones are showing up Ooh. late in the day. Don't forget about old Jack Spoon fish. Big ones oh, are showing right. up <laughs> late in the day. It's not far from it, though. Oh, it's a five. I was about to say. Yeah. Number four and number three are his coal buoys. He's got a coal between the two. Yeah. Five pounder, thank you. Four and three need to get beamed.
I'm not even gonna put a tag. Andrew Loberg coming that into this day, so eighth place. In points in the EQs, and started the day in fifth place. That one may get him up above fifth place. We have to see, though. He has certainly not lost any points during the course of this day. Couldn't get the size really going big time in the early parts of the day. Said there should get some, should be some bigger ones here, but and let's remember, he said this morning he had a 290. That first one was a 290. If that's digitally, that's almost a three pounder. But it was put in, as a, in as a two nine. nine so okay. it was put in as a two and a half, closer to three pounds. That's half a pound. That if Bass Track is close. He may have more than what it says, so we'll keep that in mind. But that jig has been a deal. Whether it was the brown half ounce jig, football jig, big Yamamoto flapping hog that he sent me last night when he was fishing deeper, but when he moved shallower to maybe the six to eight foot rocks that he's been flipping around and pitching around, that black, blue, a little bit of purple, that has been the ticket for him. And power fishing with a jig has been key, but these fish, Justin, were just as important because that's, when it was dying, he went and picked up a spinning rod. Absolutely. Th that's what built his confidence back up, got that lemon in the boat or right there at it, then went back to his jig deal. And he's making things happen now. I mean, he's one or two bites away and it could be really interesting. That one right there helped a ton. Get rid of a pound and a quarter. Oh, no doubt about so, it. That's gonna be a three and a half pound upgrade at least. Probably move him to second place, but he'd still be three quarters of a pound to a pound and a quarter behind. Okay. One more of them good jig hooks at us. Faber hooked up. It is happening on this stretch right now. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have his though. <laughs> That's a big idiot. Huh? It's got a 14 in there. It's going to be his fourth the keeper thing for about the day. Around here, they're keepers. Sounds like he's got a NASCAR race happening on his boat. <laughs> that was a big one. <laughs> we did it yesterday. Really? Right in front of you? I was right here, <laughs> and uh, he came back. I was coming this way, and he was going that way. He had three fish at like 145. Caught a big one like that, and caught another one right before he had to go in. <laughs> Great to have Colorado represented in our EQs here, even if it is just one angler from the state of Colorado. Born it's way south Colorado too, Tommy. I looked Durango. where Pagosa swing, yeah, near the border of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. How many Colorado anglers do we actually have fishing in the open? Exactly. <laughs> no, just, just, <laughs> just one, just, just literally him. just okay, one fishing, him. all nine, yeah. Represent well. I got to represent uh, last night on the phone. I kind of knew where he lived because my neighbors went to a town on vacation last week and it was not far from where he lives in Durango. So I was able to throw some Colorado knowledge out there. But the more I talked to him about it, the more he, he knew didn't I didn't smart. know. Yeah, he, he knew I did not know <laughs> <laughs> anything about where he lived. Oh boy. Uh -oh. Could be number five. Oh, yeah. There's five. That's five. Just put a little bit of If that that's number five, that means he's got an eight and three quarters, and he's got four that total seven pounds. So on the day he's lost all his quality, he's got the biggest bite that he could possibly have asked for to, yeah. to nullify it. Do something? Father Gill has 15, 12 on the day, 50 pounds, three ounces total. And Loberg, who just caught that five pounder, was 14 ounces back. Now he's 214 back. All right. Mm. Now is it Loberg who's so close to the to the way in there? Yeah, there are, he's, he's, he's not far at all. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So full fishing time. Gets the, every minute worth. He's gonna try to every pound. Drain every bit close. he can. Easton yeah. just puts another one in the boat. Top five yeah. all with limits now, Tommy. So everybody else below that has to do a lot of work real quick. Oh, it's exciting. It's a good one here. Lake Eufaula. 
10 anglers. Eastern Father Gill, our points leader on the top. What a great story. We'll be up with more of it in just a couple of minutes. The St. Croix Bassmaster Open on Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven. Sponsored by Ranger Boats. By Rapala. And by Yamaha. Well, many of our anglers, maybe 15 minutes of fishing left, maybe 10, maybe even less than that for other anglers closer to the takeoff. You can see them right there, that group. They get most of the time, get to ring as much as they can out of this day. Matt and it Adams. looks like they're fishing right on top of each other, but like Matt said, like the Miracle Mile, this whole bank right here before hmm. you make the turn towards takeoff is at least a mile or so. There's plenty of distance There's between one. the guys. Begging. They seem to be turning. Come off. <sighs> Do something crazy. Keep this PG. <laughs> that is a bad feeling, uh, especially right before weigh in. Mm. You no, know, you're just wanting that last key bite. And then a wakeboard boat. Got the freaking by. bites mm. I needed to, to at least be somewhat competitive. Instead, I've got three. Oh, you fish for Bassmaster Classic spots, you cannot freaking lose fish, especially ones like that one. Okay, over to Andrew Loberg. Right around the corner. Coming on strong last half of this day. Is that the same weight boat? <laughs> 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 Ooh, oh my goodness. goodness, another bite. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Remember, he just coal beamed two bite, small man. ones, so he now knows. To bite. Yeah, yeah, that should coal the other one. Yes. Yes. He's grinding away. Literally start seeing them bubbling now. Where before, it was just here and there. They're bubbling. Can you ask for clarification on the bubbling? <laughs> I never heard that before. I think the water in the rocks are so hot, the fish are rising in the water column. I can see it's that. bubbling. No. <laughs> Stop the crawfish, bull. I'll say at the end of today, he still has plenty of time to be able to win this tournament. But if he doesn't, he did exactly what it took to be able to win it. Someone caught an eight pound, 12 yeah. ounce fish. That's, like that's, he is, he has done his game plan and upgraded necessary so far with still 30 minutes left. Bang, baby. Uh, that was a two and a half or two and a quarter actually. It was like a 230 or something like that. Second best bag at 14 pounds, 10 ounces, two and a quarter back. Jack York still three fish to a limit. Got a good one, five and a half or five, six, I believe it is, in the boat. Really thought he was gonna make that spoon deal mm. happen. I did talk to Mercer earlier. He said that uh, Jack is basically Lee's protege, so very uh, similar acting and fishing, and that Lee would definitely win in a fight, though. <laughs> well, now that we know that, we don't have to have the fight, so that's a good thing. <laughs> we still do well, Jack still hasn't spoke up on his side of it, if he, would, <laughs> he doesn't buddy. even know. I'm sure you get enough bush lights going. <laughs> no. Them boys that do it. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yeah. Fifteener guy. to Jack's bottom line there. There's some three keepers. Connor's probably already headed back. I saw him in the background of Easton's on the map right there. Okay. He's the farthest away, so I'm assuming he's gonna, he's probably making his way back closer a little bit at least. Last thing you wanna do is turn the corner and see some of these the boats right running now. around. So I'm gonna push it right to the very end. Uh, it's been a lot slower day than the last two days, keeper-wise. I just caught my fifth keeper right back there. But, like I said, it's not over till it's over, so. I know they live here, just gotta find one. But, overall, I'm super satisfied with the week. Looking at the EQ schedule, before the year started, this was one of the ones I was most worried about, so to come out of this one with a top 10 is a huge success for me. There might be one right here. If it is, it's the one we need. Easton Fothergill, who started the day in third place, but only five ounces back of our leader when this day began in the first place position in EQ points. It wasn't just a blazing start for him today. No, he kind of, uh, we had a lot of guys start their tournament today with the same amount of fish, same size fish, two pounders, two and a half pounders. But that eight and three quarter, you can't replicate that. Oh, That's, man. you cannot, no. <laughs> you're going to have to have your best day of consistency wise, fives and fours to make up for that. This shallow bar is going to be the end of saving grace for him, catching a few on a bladed jig later in the day to fill his limit. Very important. That was huge for him. I mean, that eight pounder was definitely the biggest, no doubt about it, but with that fish alone, wouldn't have been enough. That eight pounder is the reason he can win today, but he didn't want that eight pounder to be the only reason he was in the game. So sure. catching a limit, getting, filling your limit, don't put it to chance. Do what you gotta no. do. Don't leave any meat on the bone. Yeah. And When you get a fish like that, that's such a giant fish, you definitely gotta you know, finish little, it out yeah, with it. Gets scared, scared about not catching the rest. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so many times the term is like, one day you'll catch all three pounders for 15 pounds, and then it seems like the next day you catch a seven or eight pounder, and then a bunch of pound and a halfers and end up with 15 pounds. You're like, man, I really wasted that opportunity. And you said that, that eight pounders, like two or three fish. We say that all the time. So-and-so just caught their biggest fish of the day and it's basically like they're fighting with six fish now yep. somebody's gonna have to catch a giant one because they just got an extra bonus one there in this case i think he's fighting with seven yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. just like your 11 seven was really like, no one can catch trey well actually now this <laughs> his two closest guys have a 10 12 and an 11 set maybe yeah on lake fort anything can happen now, how about a Smith Lake? You want to follow Father Gill's lead here, catch the big bass, take over the AOI lead? How's that for a plan? I wouldn't be against that. It can definitely happen there. So, I mean, I'm excited to go there, no doubt, but it's still one of those tournaments that, like, it, it's going to be interesting to see, kind of like Wheeler was, you know, guys you think that may do good. It, it's definitely one of those places you could stumble hard because mm -hmm. okay. when those fish aren't biting, it gets really tough. What do you think the weights will be like? I think they're going to be decent. I really, I really think they're going to be a little bit better than everybody was expecting. 
I know that's not a good number, but 17 16. a day will probably still win. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of in that 13, 14 pound range. What's the length limit there? 15 inch. 15 inch, all 15 inch species. On everything. Okay. They actually have a slot limit, but um, the way that works is you can keep anything under 13 inches and then over 15. But for ours, we're doing just over just 15. Overs. Yeah. Make it difficult on us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the best in the world, so that's only yeah. appropriate. You got mid keep... 60s to win. Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't We're be surprised looking if you to. see a couple 20 pound bags, old spotted bass. What there might be the big fish? Um, you could have one of these, you know, random big largemouth that's over six pounds, but I fully expect five plus pound spotted bass, you know. Like to see it, I'd like to see several. They're in there. Really looking forward to Smith. Smith Lake was on the on the schedule the very first year of the first full season of the Bassmasters. Back second in event ever. Yeah, second event ever. 1967. Yes. I don't even think blueback herring were real things in the world, <laughs> not even in Smith Lake, but they weren't even a species of thing no yet. One, no one could tell you what a blueback herring was back exactly. in those days. One of the lake dwellers there. Lake U Fall has been fun today and all week long. We got a little bit more left for you. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Lake Eufaula, St. Croix. Bassmaster open on Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven. There's the man in the lead right now, unofficially. Two pound, four ounce lead over the rest of the field. Here are 10 who are left on this final day. Easton Fothergill, Easton Fothergill, who's having a fantastic year, dating back to the college season of 2023. His Montebello University team, man, along with his partner, were the team of the year, and that kind of started the ball rolling. What's crazy, Tommy, is they were team of the year. They didn't even win one of the Bassmaster Regionals, but four other Montebello teams took titles that year, and they took the points title. Absolutely domination from a hot college fishing team, and the representative they sent to the Opens and said, shoo boy, go take care of the next level. He is taking care of them right now. Let's get down to Easton right now, trying to hang on to that lead. Make the time go faster if there's any way to do that. I don't win this like thing go back to the classic would be a dream come true. After I fished the last classic at Grand, it's, I want to be back there so bad. Like everyone told me, it's went to there once, you can't live without it, and you got to do everything it takes to get back there, and that's exactly how I feel. So to have this opportunity, it's super cool. To even be fishing the opens really is a super cool opportunity. I wouldn't be here if I didn't win the bracket, so it's definitely a life-changing tournament that Bassmaster provides us college kids to be able to work towards. And that's something I'm super grateful for. But yeah, every time I take off for an open, it's a that's a dream come true in itself. Was not expecting to be able to do it this soon. That tournament changed my life for sure. College Fishing Associated with Bass Masters has been around for almost a couple of decades now. And this is one of the great stories. We just, we just kind of set it up there, Ronnie, the team of the year, Montebello University, afforded Easton a chance to compete in the bracket competition for that slot in the 2024 Bassmaster Classic. Yeah, to think that the college series last year went to the Harris Chain of Lakes, Cherokee Lake, James River, Red River, Lay Lake, Pickwick, and Milford Lake, all that variety. He ends up victorious, winning the bracket. Now he has to go to the Opens, fish nine events in eight different lakes in the variety we have for the Opens. That is why college anglers are transitioning oh. so successfully to the next level. Five of our top 10. I mentioned that to Hank Weldon. He said, yeah, that's like a normal thing now. We're not gonna like, it's not like, oh man, five of the 10. <laughs> that is expected now based on the route, the path. This guy being one of them from Chico State in California. And Easton could book another classic trip today. Yes. Become the fifth. If he can hang on. Not too College far from where he's at, honestly. Champion with more than one classic appearance. Jordan Lee, of course. Matt Lee's got two. John Garrett's ready to get his second. Cody Huff's got three. He's been to three classics now. 
Fouts is on his way to another one. Andrew Loberg, the man in second place, is 14.10, just under 15 pounds on his day. He's got a 2.3, a 2.6, a 2.8, and a 2.9. So to make up that one gap and a fail swoop, he needs a four and a half Your pounder. Four plus, yeah. yeah. Four and a half pounder, maybe two, three pluses over the next 20 minutes. We've seen potential that's going down on this miracle mile, as they call it. It could happen in a hurry. Great for the second year in a row, being able to come here to Eufaula in Oklahoma and have some good Bassmaster competition here. It certainly is a great place to, to test these anglers. And I think everybody's gotten their line stretched pretty good this week. It's just keepers are hard to get it. It's a yeah, it might be a little hot in Oklahoma this time of the year, but we remember, if you remember, Tommy, a few years ago, 2016, Greg Hackney, mm -hmm. water was high. It hadn't started falling yet. On the Red River, yeah. One at Lake Texoma, yeah. not far from where we're at. Yeah, this about wrapped up here part of the quick. country is pretty good in June. Uh, would really like to get another bite. A uh, four or five pounder would be great right now. Um, they're around here, man. Just, just got to keep plugging away. But overall, a fun week and uh, a fun tournament, and stoked to get my first top ten here at uh, Lake Eufaula. Um, can't wait to go up north and get in a little bit cooler weather. Black jersey looks cool, but not doesn't make you stay cool in this heat. I'll tell you that right now. But uh, yeah, man, I'm stoked how today went. Three cuts out of four events. Good season for Andrew Loberg, no doubt about that. Best finish previously was at our first stop in the Division Two, and that was Lake Washita. We got seven of our ten anglers today in the top ten of the AOI. It's kind of amazing. That's, that's this point in the season, normally you see like third oh. event or something, you know, yeah, it's like of course they're in the top. They just had a recent good yeah. finish. But we're we're mid we're, middle middle of the season. Yeah. heard us mention it before they're gonna and Andrew mentioned it there they're gonna head up north for the next three events. Decent father girl has after St. Clair Leech Lake is about an hour or so from his home in Grand Rapids Minnesota. I don't know how often he's fished it but oh, he may it's, have a home oh, field <laughs> advantage a little the, bit the, there. As soon as the schedule was announced I got a text and said Easton father girl watch out because he had already won the bracket and so it was you better be careful for him there. I said, well, what about the other six events before we get to Leach? And they were like, oh, yeah, he's going to be good at those, too. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> well, he's traveling with Bo Browning, the room, and together. At Montevallo, they say they got the best, best of both worlds, knowledge of the southern fisheries and the northern fisheries, and they're talking after every event and comparing notes and whatnot. So. Well, I mean, and this is, this is the expectation. Easton and Nick Dumkey fished four years together in high school, All over. had success in Minnesota, and both said, we need to go and diversify. We need to figure this out. They go to Alabama to fish at the University of Montevallo. Lay Lake is what the closest lake to there. You got the Coosa River. You're really not far from other lakes if you want to try things. And so they got to learn the southeast 
just like we saw the Seth Fighters of the world learn the Southeast, but on Bassmaster Elite Series. These guys are doing it before the Elite Series. Well, it's just, uh, Justin about the Northern Series when he learned that yeah, how to do it, well it up took, there. Me and, me and Patrick got our teeth kicked in, especially my first year, but just being able to learn those diverse places, it definitely helps. Those two anglers right there, Eastern Fothergill with the lead, Andrew Loberg behind him. It's down to those two. We'll settle it all when we come back. Less than 10 minutes remaining. St. Croix Bassmaster Open, Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven. Had a great, great competition today. Eastern Fothergill, as it stands right now, unofficially, unofficially, two pounds and four ounces ahead of Andrew Loberg. Connor Jacob in third place. But all of our anglers are very, very close to the, to the way into the check-in. Check-in will be underway within eight minutes here. Right following that begins the weigh-in. So it's all gonna happen pretty quick here. As you can see, most of our anglers are there. Bo Thomas, not quite there yet. Connor Jacob. A little ways to go if we get that if it's updated. But right now, Easton Fothergill, with the strength of a giant bass he caught about 11 o'clock today, just before 11 o'clock, he's got the lead over Andrew Loeber. Not only classic birth on the line, $44,000 to the winner. 17 and change, 13 and change, 12, 11, and 10 down to sixth place. 10th place will get $8,700 right, today. Go. Valuable points as well. Dang it. Mm -hmm. Don't have him on camera, but Connor Jacob just got rid of his one pounder. He's got 15 2 on the day. He's still about three and a quarter or so back of the lead. Okay, so he's up to date as far as we know. As far as we know. His bass track. Who was that? Connor. Okay. Connor Jacob. So. Two pounder just popped in, Ronnie. Got rid of his little one pounder. We were thinking that if he was off bass track and he had a five pounder, he could be in yeah, the league. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Connor could be low. He's weighed all his fish, yet they're all so even on bass track. Four, three, three. He could be a little bit low, but like we said, three pounds is in. That'd be it. And we expect Easton to maybe, we were talking during commercial break, some of those one and a quarter, one and a half, could be one and a half to two pounds, another half pound to a pound total. You think as big as exactly eight pounds, 12 ounces? I mean, would you, I don't expect, I don't think Easton's a liar yet. No, He's still know. very He's young in fishing. Be, he can develop that later. Oh, that but comes much later. Yeah. Be 8 15. You're a fisherman. It, it's pretty developed. <laughs> <laughs> You're just born with that. So far, man. We grinded away, man. Uh, we uh, we got you know some keeper bites. Scale says 15 and a half, which I like, but I think I'm one bite away really uh, for how tough it is. But there's just big ones in here, you know. Um, either way, it was fun. Learned a lot on this lake. Um, I've been here a couple times before and got my butt whooped and. Uh, it's good to have a good showing and move up in the points too for the EQ Bassmaster to try to make it to the elite. So this stop is done and ready to get to St. Clair and try to reel on a big old smallmouth. And 
your little bird putting a lid on it for today. You wrap up over your day there, Easton. Had a pretty decent day. Uh, without that big one, it wouldn't have been such a good day, but <laughs> that big one kind of helps our bag a little bit. So. But no, it was, it was a fun day. We caught plenty of fish, only five keepers, but we had to adapt a little bit, fish some shallow stuff to fill our limit. But overall, I'm super happy with the decisions I made all week long. Really trusted my gut, and that's that's what led me to a top 10 this week. So I'm overall super, super happy with the week. He couldn't even keep a straight face. I think face. He, he acts absolutely <laughs> accurate. Without that big one, would have had a Ooh. piddling, trifling day. Yeah. With that big one, who knows what could happen to the way in. Congrats to Easton on the great job he did at the Bassmaster Classic. But boy, what have you done lately? Well, he's done this. <laughs> Jesus For a quiet me. kid, Tommy, Ugh. was more smiley and excitable than we've ever seen him. And on 8-12, we'll do that to most people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Just the big, big bombshell of the final day of the tournament. Maybe of the tournament, let's say. No doubt of the tournament. Uh -huh. When you're beat, you know, previous two days, big fish by two over pounds. two pounds. Yeah. You know, we've seen some good, good moments and some trying moments for our anglers. That's what makes a tournament what it is. It's what it, makes it fun to watch on Bassmaster Live. And hats off to Let's go. Lake Eufaula and all these 10 anglers who have fought through it all to get here on this day. Taking a lot of expertise and, and sticking with it. Very hungry and also well-spoken top 10. Yeah. Young anglers that are in there knew the, the magnitude of the opportunity today. Bo Thomas, Andrew Loberg, Easton, Trey. Nine of them will come up short, but Tommy, they all, it burns even stronger. And it looks like based on the points race, we'll see more of these guys in the future. Oh, yeah, we, we had a big look. At, we had a big preview of the, the, the possible points winners at the end of the season right there because seven of our top 10 we're in the top 10 in points. I don't know how that happens, but it came to pass here at Lake Eufaula. Justin Hammer, can't thank you enough. Man. Yeah, that was man. a big deal for us to have you here. Thank y'all for having me. I had Great so much job. fun being able to do this. Yeah. I mean, yeah, hopefully y'all have me back in, but. Obviously, I you like it. fishing. I like fishing. <laughs> yes. I mean, they, that eight pounder still got me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, it was a fun day. Great day out here. Right Don't now, forget, yeah, they're checking in right now. It's the weigh in begins here at about one minute, 3 p.m. Eastern time on Fastmaster.com. That's right here. So stick around. I got to turn that on. Yeah, 10 angler weigh in. Watching before you go to the airport. Yeah, yeah. Let's see how this thing checks out. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's been great bringing you the St. Croix Fastmaster Open from Lake Eufaula, presented by Seven. We will see you the next time the Open commence up north.